Have we got an intro yet? No. We were too busy fucking with our audio to do an intro. Uh, uh, I will think of one on the top of my head. Okay. Like a good cold open, you know, because I learned what that is today. Yeah, like ice cold. It's like, um, they do those apparently because when people are, like, seeing a no show was coming on, instead of just showing the intro or whatever, they just get get you right into uh, what's happening with the characters. Or it's yeah, like, they want to like grab your attention, like, it's like right a hook. away. Yeah, like, The Office has cold opens. Yeah, and I mean, I think so a lot of shows do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not ours, though, because just fuck cold opens. We just go right into what we're doing. Which is the Loincloth Hour. Welcome, everyone, to our podcast where we talk <laughs> about gargoyles uh, and other TV shows, maybe one day, and how gay all of them are and how the men in them are hot, and we like that. There are many a men and there are many a gay <laughs> today. And Welcome. it's hosted by myself, Manicorn, and my friend Sid. Hello. I'm friend Sid. We did it. We did the open. That I'm was a so good proud open. of you. That was okay. really good. Uh, so I know that we said we we're going to do episode six, uh, Thrill of the Hunt, today. But in reviewing this episode, we actually found there was not much material to talk about. So we've decided to instead just skip right to episode seven. <laughs> um, I hope that doesn't disappoint uh, anybody. But just no. episode six, there there wasn't no. anything in it, you know. No. So <laughs> hey. I hope that's all right. We, we, hey. Hey. My yes, fucking, is there a problem? Fucking, there's, there's, there's a few problems. We are, we <laughs> hyped up the, us doing this episode, and now that we're finally here, we're gonna spend some time talking well, I mean, about what's there to even talk about? Like, um, like bisexual people, just five bisexual people who form a band together. A bunch of we were <laughs> pretty much introduced to the entire gargoyles lgbt community in this episode <laughs> they're all here they're all they, they, here they all came in at once as a group because that's how lgbt people are in real life like they're if you're, here if you're, they're as a gay queer. person like 90 percent of my friends are also gay like that's just how it is i have like i know people i don't know if they're gay or not but they're people that's different but but I also know the pack, and the pack is very gay. They are the gayest. Like, we thought the Manhattan clan was gay. Uh, I, we which, didn't... you know, they are. They, and they, yes, they are. But they're not gay like the pack is gay. Oh, no. I feel like the pack are, like, on the next level of gayness. But, yeah, with the pack, we have muscle men. Mm -hmm. We have, like, lesbian solidarity. We have whatever yes. the hell Jackal and Hyena are. Uh, um, well, she's a robot fetishist. We know that much. She's yes, uh. and she's also she's also <laughs> she she's also bisexual, I believe. They're all bisexual, like every one of them, except for Wolf. Wolf is just gay. Wolf is our special case. He is. He's he's a very very special case. Um, for those of you who have come this far into the One Cloth Hour. And they're like, what the not, fuck are they talking about? <laughs> they're like, they, they don't know what the hell we're talking about. Um, there is a set of villains we're pretty fixative. Oh, well, I'm pretty fixative on specifically um, Wolf, who I have this burning urge to simp for since I was about um, God. Like, I remember when I was like 14 or 15, and I saw every time Gargoyles came on my like DVR because I set it to record. And I saw this guy, and I'm just like, oh my god, he's definitely got a few, got a few, uh, got a few nuts loose in the old noggin. Oh uh, yeah, he's had some nut inside him. He's been nutted yes. in. He's probably, is, yeah. Is that what we were saying? Um, I, probably. I feel like, like, everyone has that character that made them, mm -hmm. like, realize their sexuality. And I sort of, I don't know if Wolf was that character for you, but he, like, cemented it. Um, I don't think he was the, like, awakening, awakening. There were several other pieces of media that definitely had me, you know, questioning myself and feeling a bit funny. Yeah, awakening um, was a five-parter in Gargoyles. It is, yes. And it, it was like a five-parter in the epic finale. It was just Wolf, like you said, <laughs> who cemented just my fixation on uh, fictional muscle men um, forever, pretty much. 
forever and ever. Look, um, gargoyles turned me gay, and I expect uh, full uh, reparations uh, in coming time by Greg Wiseman. Yeah, he owes you, like, a lot for that. Yeah, so does Clancy Brown. I'm traumatized by hearing his uh, oh gravely, just manly voice. Yeah, uh, I mean, Akira just... Toriyama is the same for me, because fucking Dragon Ball Z did it for me, of all things. Uh, we should talk about this episode, because there's... You know, I feel like there actually is a lot to talk about it. I think we both took extensive notes on this one. Um, uh, do you want me to just announce to the viewers how many notes I took on this episode? Go for it. So, for the last, like, five episodes of the One Cloth Hour, um, I'll, I'll admit, I kind of just jot my notes down at the last meth... Me- second? Not method. Um, the last meth? Yes, the last meth. <laughs> um, I stayed up all night watching this 20 minute episode of tele of daytime television and i took a total of 6254 words of notes down um 19 is, pages i yeah like this is the first time you've taken like way more than i have i just looked at mine it's like it's 3500 which i think for me is like more than i usually do take but like yeah you blew me out of the water on this one Look, Congratulations. It, 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 my my favorite character is introduced in this episode. There's no way oh, I can't wait. Not. Who's your favorite character? Uh, is, who is know, <laughs> Trash Dog? That's who it is. Oh my! Not a den. <laughs> he comes back. He makes a special return somewhere. This, in this is episode. where he went. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine if, like, years from now, Greg Weissman revealed that like Wolf actually is just like a an actual animal wolf who got turned into a human? Okay, and but, then not turn like, into a mutate. I I don't want to get into <laughs> spoiler territory, so I'm probably gonna cut this out. But like later in the series, there's like an episode where they're like in Egypt or something, um, and Wolf and the pack are there, and mm-hmm. I guess Jackal goes like a bit power hungry and tries to become like some weird furry Egyptian god or something. <laughs> I don't know. This is like this is. I, I like vaguely a... remember this episode. I remember is... not liking it. <laughs> it's it's a pretty weird episode. Um, <laughs> it's during the world tour, so that's probably why you don't like it. Yeah. Um, like they were just traveling to Egypt. They just happened to run into the pack there. But um, it, pretty much there's a scene where um the like I think Wolf and Hyena both get like age regressed, and Wolf turns into oh, just a puppy dog because he was a mutate so he don't turn into oh my god he don't turn yes! into a literal puppy <laughs> like god. i don't even remember this but i can somehow see it in my brain anyway that this oh happened. god it def- there's like oh somewhere- my god hold on let me look this up <laughs> it, it was weird i remember oh my god there's hyena and baby wolf right there that's adorable Hold on, let me send it. Baby hyena looks like um, she kind of looks like the boss baby a little. I don't know. I I don't want to see hyena. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Look at wolf. Look at him. <laughs> oh my! Whoa, he looks cool. <laughs> He's so cute. Wait, okay. How did hyena's outfit also like age? I don't know. Her? I'm not gonna question it because I don't want to see <laughs> a weird naked hyena baby. And where did Wolf's outfit go? Was he naked before this happened? It grows back with him, I think, at the end of the episode. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's a lot going on. It's a very fucking weird episode. Oh my, okay, if you could have a puppy wolf as an actual pet, like would you? If it grew up. In t- I mean, either or, I would have it. Obviously. I feel like he'd be a bad dog. Like he'd chew on all your furniture and pee <gasps> on things. He would. He would pee everywhere. He would try to mark his territory as the alpha. Uh huh. <laughs> he would be a terrible dog. I want. I love him. So a thing like a lot of TV shows do after their like initial pilot episode is they like reintroduce the audience, the characters, and the central like conflict in the first like quote real episode. Um, okay. do you think they do that with this episode? Um, I think, no, I, I don't think they necessarily do. Um, no, they just introduce like five other people in this one. Yeah, so it's pretty much just picking right where Awakening Part 5 left off. So, 
Um, we start the episode off, Elisa is going into Xanatos' tower to visit the gargoyles, and Owen is allowing her up, and she rightfully questions why she's even allowed to be in the building, considering she's the one that arrested Xanatos, but, um, Owen insists that Xanatos is, quote, not one to hold a grudge, and, quote, wouldn't dream of denying her the opportunity to see her friends. And what a quote. nice guy. You know, maybe Xanatos isn't so bad after all. It's interesting how Xanatos is just that kind of guy who prefers to watch things play out rather than just directly involve himself as, like, you know, your typical antagonist would normally do. Well, I mean, I can see a couple reasons why he would be doing this. Like, either he... Now that... Elisa is like has been placed so to speak among the gargoyles he's better able to predict what all of them will do while they're together maybe hmm and like this is just you know like because everything he does is like another Machiavellian scheme so like right, I, can't, I can't imagine like him allowing Elisa to like hang out with the gargoyles unless he thought he was going to get something out of it exactly yeah no it's definitely an interesting um thing because it's like we know that a good majority of the events in like the first season is uh allegedly Xanatos is just like you know everything's going according to plan according to him yeah I feel like a lot of the times he just says that like, yeah he's just making shit up as he can. like anytime anything happens he just goes like uh ah, according to plan and like <laughs> Owen there is probably just like that wasn't according to like shut the fuck up that's not even God, true. I, I had this <laughs> one friend who would do shit like that. We would be playing, like, Worms Open Warfare. And I, I would, that like... Game. That's a good game. <laughs> like, if, if you haven't played that game and you're listening to this, I recommend it highly. But, um, it's fun to play with friends. But, uh, I remember taking out, like, his, uh, entire, like, enemy... His, like, entire team with, like, an airstrike. And he'd be like, yes! All according to plan. I'm like, what? Fuck you're dead! You. <laughs> you're dead! <laughs> It doesn't matter, though, because it's all according to plan. You just played right into his hands. It's, that's, what, that, that's what Xanatos, like, reminds me Yeah, like, me even of. when Xanatos is defeated, he'll just be like, oh, well, it's, it's okay because it still works into, like, my 19 other backup plans that he has. I, I would just like to see, like, a whole just wall blueprint of just all the plans <laughs> Xanatos has. All of them involve Goliath's butthole. Oh, God. And putting more trackers in it. Yes. So, um. <laughs> like, like it's funny how Xanatos, despite not being shown a lot in this episode, um, you know, he still has quite just this prolific impact on the show and the characters, even, you know, when he's not, like, making a major appearance or something, which you, is... You can feel his invisible hand working yeah. in the background. Yeah. Like, you can feel his invisible hand just kind of, like, stroking, like, the back of your neck, being like, and he's all like, yes, good, Yeah, just, yes. just like, gently fondling Goliath's, like, buttocks, stroking he, them. Yes. A, a little squeeze every once in a while. It's, it's, it's a power thing. <laughs> but, okay, so they, so Elisa and Owen go up to the top of the tower, the gargoyles are asleep, and then there's, like, there's another extremely fast sunset, in which the show has all the time. The sun, like, fucking flies below the horizon. Yes. Um, and then there's, like, this might be one of the better wake-up scenes that gargoyles it, had, because, like, yes. the, lies, the stone chips fly off of him, and he does this, like, insanely well-animated, like, flexing motion. Like, his back arches, and you, like, see his, like, pecs just, like, balloon like they tend to do. And his, like, arm muscles, and he's just like, Aah! He has his fists clenched, and, like, all his muscles are just, like, mm -hmm. clenching. And, you know, you know he's also working that butt as well as he's getting Yeah, there. yeah, you know that is clenching as well. Uh, yes. <laughs> the other guard was wake up too, but, like, who cares about them? Right. So, um, yeah, no, and, and as he's waking up, we get this really interesting shot of Elisa just checking him out from behind, because it's like, you know she's into that, um, and of course she's still amazed by the whole awakening process. She is, but then he sees her and he says, Elisa, what a pleasant sight to greet us as we awaken, which is like, yes. ooh. And Owen just kind of leaves. Yeah, he's just like, bye, and Delight like glares at him as he goes, he's like, why the fuck are you even up here? I mean, 
Yeah, we get into um why that in a minute, but um it's funny because it's like they're all super happy to see Elisa. Uh, Hudson just passes by happily saying to her, "Good to see you, lass," and he just <laughs> heads to his little TV room. Uh huh. And... Yeah, like everyone sort of splits up. The trio like just fly down yes. to the city, and Elisa's like, "Where the fuck's everyone going?" And Joanne and... says, "Oh, they're fascinated by the things they see on the <laughs> television." That doesn't Every really answer the question. <laughs> Wait, I'll tell you, it's weird because Hudson's the one going to watch TV, but, like, the trio aren't. It's like they're just flying, we don't know where the fuck they're going, but he says they're all going to watch I, TV. It, it, it's funny because, uh, no, but they are going to watch TV. Like, they're flying down to the next floor, and I guess Hudson's taking the stairs But it takes them longer to get there, because Hudson's watching the TV for a while before they show well, up. Well, I don't know, maybe they had to go jerk <laughs> off first. I'm not they probably Yeah, they've all had to, like, yeah, they had to come in each other's mouths before they could settle down on the couch <laughs> with the old man. I, I was thinking just, like, a little group jerk-off session, because it's... No, that, I think that they, all, I think they 69 no. each other, like, as soon as they wake up every night. Yeah, he's he's like he's like oh, Brooklyn's all like oh come on bro you gotta you gotta get in their mouth before we go you know bother Hudson with the TV, and Broadway's just like man I'm hungry. Yeah, and then Lexington's like well if you're so hungry then choke on this dick. And then Lexington pulls out his twenty foot schlong and just oh my like, smothers them both. Yeah, well I mean we know that the gargoyles uh their uh, their private parts are like uh in ratio to the rest of their bodies, but I feel like Lexington is the uh, exception to that rule. I massive refuse dick. to believe Lexington's <laughs> dick is small. No, you know it's big. He, he, he's packing. You can't yeah, Especially tell in this not. episode. Look at his smug little, like, little, his cute little <laughs> goblin face. You know he's got something going on down there that he's not telling anybody. He knows something you won't, you don't know. Oh my god. Um, I don't even know where the fuck we were. <laughs> right, okay, everyone splits up. Um. And Goliath's <laughs> like, yeah, they're fascinated by television. And it has nothing to do with the conversation at present, but it has everything to do with the episode. I also think um, it's really cute the way he says television. Like, he, he just says he, things in a cute way. He, I think another so implication here is that Hudson's become a porn addict by this point in the series. <gasps> oh my god. I mean, it's possible. No, wait, but if he is, later it's revealed that the only channel they have watching is, like, the pack. So, so he has no choice but to jerk off to it, because it's all that they have. Whenever it's on TV, he's just like, eh, I'll find a way. <laughs> he's like, I've already jerked off to Dingo's ass, like, 70 times. Can I get oh something God. else? No, but, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good ass to jerk off to. I mean, Dingo, he's... He's got really taut, like, just buttocks. Yeah, very firm, very tight. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, we have to go in order of what happens, or yeah, else people I'm are going to be confused. Okay, okay. We're so sorry, so, everyone. So, Goliath carries on the conversation with Elisa, talking about Xanatos' defeat and them taking the rightful place <laughs> in the castle once again. And this about proceeds. What? Xanatos' quote, defeat. Oh, unquote. I thought you said Xanatos' feet. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's not what I said. Oh god, we're a mess. We we gotta get through this episode. Oh my god, this is gonna be longer than last one. We're like we're like thirty seconds in. Oh my god. So, um, he's talking about Xanatos's defeat, right? And then taking their rightful place in their castle once again. And this proceeds to a subplot that kind of begins here and carries on for the next few episodes. Um, mm -hmm. when Elisa tries to convince him that Xanatos will be out of jail eventually and right. is going so, to take back the castle, Goliath doesn't really register that. Mm -hmm. Right, so last episode, I think I was the one who was like, when Xanatos got arrested, I was like, but wait, like, what crimes is he actually being mm -hmm. charged with? Because he has to, to keep the gargoyle's presence a secret. Um, so it turns out all he's been convicted of is just receiving stolen property. Um, like, like... An airship exploded, and I'm pretty sure people died. <laughs> yeah, but they can't pin that on him. Um, but and then, then Elisa so... sort of explains that the American justice system is, like, rigged in favor of the wealthy, and that they're lucky as Anatos is even getting, like, the six months in prison that he's gotten now. He'll probably get out early. Um, 
So once he does get out, that all the Dardles are going to be in danger. So they have to find a new place to sleep. Yeah, but Goliath doesn't really register this at all, and um, he's pretty much in outright denial that he that that's going to happen. And he's just like, um, it's interesting because he either doesn't understand what Elise is trying to convey to him, or just doesn't want to understand. He definitely doesn't want to understand because I think. Um, I mean, they're in modern day now, but, like, the castle is such a huge part of the life that they used to have. I don't, he doesn't want to give that up, I don't think. Like, this is um, a guy who is lo- at this point, has lost close to everything. Like, his entire uh, species, mm-hmm. his trust in humanity, and his girlfriend twice. Yes. And and plus, guarding the castle is, like, a very big part of, like, the Gargoyle culture. So he probably feels that without the castle as, like, their anchor, so to speak. Like, the the whole clan will be lost without this thing mm-hmm. that they can do. Um, I That's think... I'm reading it. I think, um, I actually read up on it. I did some research. Uh, did you? A- and it's apparently something... I'm gonna get into mental health for a bit here, but apparently something that occurs in a lot of people who have, like, some form of, like, trauma. There are cases where people will fix themselves into, like, a state of denialism, you know, saying things like, this isn't going to happen, so many bad things have already happened, but we still have this one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what Goliath's case here is, but I also agree with you on what you said, that, you know, uh, guarding the castle that they've known for so long gives them a sense of purpose. So I think it could be a yeah. mix of, like, well, both. I feel like you're you're very correct there, and that guarding the castle is probably, like, how he's justifying it to himself. Yes. But the reality is, it, yeah, like you said, he's probably, like, he he's just so fixated on, like, at least keeping this one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like he, he, yeah. he's definitely, you know, he, he's he's got some angst to him and it's affecting his decision making. Um, uh, but he does take the opportunity here to like do another like really nice looking like flexing sequence because he's so angry at the thought of leaving yes. the castle that he just has to like unfurl his wings and like mm-hmm. do an arm thing, like thrust his chest out and be like, no. Like he's and... <laughs> he's not necessarily just angry but he's reacting extremely emotionally to the proposition of possibly having to find new refuge somewhere else like that's Mm -hmm. just not acceptable to him so he just doesn't even want to so he's having an emotional outburst right but elisa elisa tells him that you know xanatos bought the castle lock stock and gargoyle god (laughs) it's so bad (laughs) (laughs) And then, Uh, yeah, so after he's all like, no, like, shut up, you worry too much, Elisa, Xantos was defeated, we're gonna stay here. She says, like, I think your head stays rock hard even at night, which is another sassy. Elisa's only in, like, this one scene, but she has a couple sassy zinners in it, so we're happy about that. Like, just the comment, I think your head stays rock hard even at night, I mean, Uh, like, that is a very clever pun. I think your dick stays rock hard even at night. Yeah, no, it's like rock hard at night. It's like, I just, I know she wants to fuck Goliath, but damn it, girl, be subtle. She, no. Well, you can't be subtle with Goliath, because he's a fucking himbo. Like, you need to fucking smack him over the head with it. Or, like, knock him out caveman style, like, drive him back to your cave, like, over your shoulder. It's also interesting that um, he's in this kind of middle ground of both the nihilism and having to face reality, because... Um, interestingly enough, the plot of this episode has to do with, um, you know, what people see on TV, what they choose to believe. Um, and I, I I think that's kind of like a brilliant little connotation to Mm -hmm. the subject Yeah, and it's a message that's probably like more relevant today than it was when this episode first aired. Oh yeah. Sadly. And like this episode is definitely like, don't believe everything you see on TV, but I would say it applies to much more than just television nowadays. I mean, oh, I, we have I think so. <laughs> like we have so many media outlets and stuff. But we can forget about all that heavy stuff because now we're just gonna have a lighthearted episode about some wacky characters who come on. No, uh... there's there's definitely there's definitely more emotional stuff ahead on the stuff. No, it's just gonna be a happy fun time. Uh, so we go down to, to Hudson just turning on the TV and watching a, a funny TV show. Yeah, he's um downstairs watching television in his sofa once again, and he's scratching Bronx, who's sitting behind him, commenting on how this world is just filled with marvels. Yeah, when he sees Wolf's package. 
Australian. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. Because on television, he <laughs> seems to be watching some form of action reality television show titled The Pack. Yes, okay, um, the first thing we hear, like, there's just screaming electric guitar, and then we see, like, the <laughs> Pack logo. And to me, this this is like a like a Power Rangers or like an American Gladiators style show. It's like a mix of both of those, I think. Yeah. So, um, we see on the television that all these uh, people are dressed up as uh, action stars in these flashy armored grunt-ups, and in the pack are five characters who seem to be running through a variety of obstacle courses, and including spikes that come out of walls that they avoid, and also ninjas leaping out at them that they, I guess, beat up. I know a lot Evil of your... ninjas. Evil ninjas. God, that was one thing that really annoyed me during this episode is everyone talking about the evil ninjas. That's what they're called. They're like the Foot Clan, but they're the evil ninjas. So pretty much on the TV, these characters are displaying a bunch of cliche action hero stuff you would see in like a 90s film. Yeah, but it's name. fucking awesome because it's the pack it and awesome. I love the pack. Yes, 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 yes. They're so cool. If I was alive, like, if the pack was a real show when I was a kid, I would have been fucking hooked on it. I know I would have been. It, it, it looks it looks that... I mean, who doesn't want to see, like, just hot people flipping, doing backflips and beating up people? Yeah, and they, they all look like they're wearing spandex, too. Like, at least, like, spandex they are. pants. So they all have, like, nice asses. They do. They do. <laughs> um... And uh, Hudson seems a bit disinterested in the TV channel, but he attempts yeah, like to change it. He's jerked off to this like 11 times already. He wants yeah, some new like material he's just for tired Daddy. Of it at this point. But uh -huh. curiously enough, the remote doesn't seem to work when the TV show is on. Yeah, he keeps pressing the button, but like, you know, flip the channels, but it just, it's always the pack. And he's like, eh, why is this happening? Um, it's almost like they're being forced to watch it. Oh, that's, no, it's just because the pack is so popular, it's on every channel. Like, oh, yeah, That course. used to happen back then. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, so the TV, the blah, so the door opens and the trio comes in. I guess, yeah, like, I guess they flew down, but then they just flew back up to watch TV. Um, and Lexington goes like, hey, it's the pack! Like, he's the biggest fucking fan of this show. And Brooklyn's like, Cool. Um, no. So okay, so they just have like a short conversation where Hudson's all like, "Something's wrong with the TV. It's on all the channels again." And then the trio is like, "Oh, I thought you liked this show, though." And he's like, "I, I do, but not every night." Mm -hmm. uh, while he's looking at like Dingo's ass, just parading itself all over the screen. Yes. Um, and then the the TV show is like, "See the pack in person tonight at Madison Square Gardens." Uh, and this, of course, excites Lexington, who's like a huge fan of the show. And he goes as far as saying that, you know, they're, they're warriors just like we are. He's so into them. He is. Which, how can you not be? Especially when you're Lexington and you're still, you know, trying to like, you, you, like, like you see hot people and you're still discovering things about yourself. <laughs> they make There's me the... feel funny in my pants, he seems to be saying. <laughs> or in my loincloth, as the case may be. Ah, uh, snap, son. It's the name of our podcast. You yeah, know what that the Boing means. Cloth Hour. Welcome. Uh, so, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, as the scene closes, the, the camera sort of zooms on, like, Lexington's very happy face as he's watching TV. Um, and we pan away from the castle, so we're introduced to these supposed pack characters. Um, the first one to speak is my personal favorite oh my member of the pack. And, and uh, who's we that? We are finally introduced to the character who only calls himself Wolf. Wolf. He, he is a tall and masculine man with kind of like a... He's got like a lot of facial hair going on, like a bit of a bushy gray beard. Not really bushy, but it's like very slick and looking. And he's got long timber colored hair that's somehow simultaneously a mullet and a very long ponytail that reaches his butt. <laughs> Um, he does both. One one style wasn't enough for him. The best of both worlds. Uh, he has crimson arm bracers that have little tufts of what I assume is like wolf hair. I don't know. Um, 
he's got little fu- furry stuff on it and he's got his upper torso is primarily dressed in that of a black undershirt with like a big wolf armor chest plate uh he's also sleeveless so he can show off those biceps of course and he like the others has very skin tight spandex leggings and his are gray so what i'm getting from this is that he looks ridiculous He's he a ridiculous looks looking person. fucking ridiculous. He's a very <laughs> ridiculous person. Um, I have kind of assessed in my head that Wolf is just constantly going through an identity crisis um, throughout the course of the show. Um, like, like he, how, how do I be more masculine than I already am? It's like that season of Always Sunny where Mac just becomes really fat all of a sudden. And <laughs> he doesn't know... He, 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 like, the, what did the therapist say he had, like, uh, body dysmorphia or something? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Wolf on the same lines is pretty much just Mac embedded into this super masculine But for him, character. it's like he has to be, like, as big and muscular as he possibly can be. It's the same way with Mac. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Pact Media Studio, and we just know the Pact is here, and the first person we hear talking is Wolf. And he's saying, I think he's saying, this is getting old. And then Fox replies, the leader, she's like, quit complaining. We never had it this good. And as they're talking, he is persistently lifting weights and complaining pretty much just how trivial each of their hunts are becoming. Uh, he's also sweating old. a lot. He's like he this big, muscular, sweaty and man. And grunting a lot. Uh-huh. And um, Fox is off to the side talking with him. Um, she's just this athletic red-haired woman dressed in, like, a crimson, uh, combatant jumpsuit, just, and she tells him to just quit complaining because they have never had it this good, referring to money, of course. Um, of course. again, like, like the other pack members, we get an immediate sense of her personality with their first lines. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, if you notice that Wolf's voice is familiar sounding, <laughs> that is because he is voiced by Clancy Brown who also voices Hakon, the dumbass Viking, oh from the beginning hey, it, of the he's series. He's basically just Hakon Mark II. Like, he's just as much a dumbass. Like, they have the same personality. He's like the... He's like Hakon 2.0, and they just added a whole lot of gay to the mix. And he like, was already gay with the guard captain. Like, they're just like, let's make him gayer and a little hotter. <laughs> Um, I'm sure the spandex. I he you know it's like when you're just a cool guy action star who wants to show off how strong you are, you need to dress a certain way to convey it. Yes, you do. This is a very true thing. I'm sure there's no real connection there with uh, Hakon and Wolf or anything in the show. I'm sure it's just a coincidence that their voices. Yeah, the same of person. course. This it's just one of those things. Um. <laughs> But so the rest of the pack members, they're all just working out in full costume for some reason. Well, um, as they do. But so I, let's let's describe these fucking people, these ridiculous people. Uh, we off already to the got side. Fox and Wolf. Uh, Fox, yes. by the way, also has a badass tattoo, like over one eye. Uh, She's she got a, the awesome. David Bowie just star eye for some reason. Is it a tattoo of a fox? Is that what it is? I don't know. It's like I, a like little... I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like a little lump of green just encircling her eye. And I, I feel like it. it's like a fox face. I think fox is a furry, is what we're getting out of this. They're all furries! They, they, just, they're all named after animals. Yes! And, and their and... group is called the pack. Well, and there's a lot of talk about, like, an alpha, and some of them have claws, some of them have paws. Uh-huh. Oh my god. So, okay, so the entire group just radiates bisexual energy. Yes. Um, we already did Fox and Wolf. Off to the side are twins, Jackal and Hyena, uh-huh. also wearing armored jumpsuits. They both have very sharp claws that cut, and they, they're both cutting through some cardboard cutouts of people, um, essentially training dummies for, I guess, the show or whatever. Um, not to draw any further confusion, I'll say for the record now that Jackal is the brother and Hyena is the sister. It's easy to um, get confused, though, because they look very similar to each other. No, I mean, I guess a little. Um, I feel like the, I get them confused all the time. They're also extremely incestuous. These two are like incestuous sex freaks. Can we just get that out of the way? Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I, I think I wrote in my notes that they 
they probably fuck each other because creepy twins be like that sometimes. I feel like they definitely do, just based on all like the weird subtext they get with each other. Yes, and they both kind of have these looks like they know they're these chaotic shit lords, <laughs> and they're just they're just there to live it up. They're both very chaotic neutral. Jackal is this kind of power hungry, I'm better than you fuck boy who is just one of those individuals who constantly talks like he's smarter than everyone else. Very Draco Malfoy vibes, essentially. His voice is actually really funny in this episode. He's always like it is. enunciating things in a weird way. Like an He evil sounds way. British. <laughs> he also has like this gigantic mullet too. Yeah, it, he does. It's not as good as Wolf's in the slightest. No, not not at all. Definitely. No. Um, and Hyena is very chaotic herself, um, I, she's just got this whole living to fuck shit up mindset, um, and I don't think she's the, definitely not the brightest in the group, but... I, I feel like she's the most psychotic one, though. Yeah, that's, that was what I was trying to get at. Uh Uh-huh. In my notes, I actually compared her to Harley Quinn a little, because I was just trying to think of a character to make an example of, but I don't know if it's necessarily that. that extent. But I, I guess I could kind of see it. Um, and then, of course, after these two, we're also introduced to Dingo. Um, um, I'll Dingo. let you take the reins on this one. My beautiful. I mean, what is there to say about Dingo? He, he's <laughs> Australian. He's a himbo. He's, he's beautiful. I, I mm. don't know what to say. He's, he's muscular. Um, like, he's not as big as Wolf, but he's more like, he's a little shorter. He's, he's compact. He looks um, like a porn star. He looks like a porn star. He has the porn star mustache. Um, he talks with an outrageous Australian accent all the time. He sounds he has, like Kano from Mortal Kombat with his Australian hair. His outfit is like really tight pants and then like a harness, a harness. For, his upper bo- for his upper body. But like it leaves like his abs open. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he, I think he's beautiful. He's one of the hottest characters of all time. Way hotter than Wolf, I'll say that. I disagree, but, you know, <laughs> well, I'll let bygones be bygones. We've had these um, conversations many times. He's extremely bisexual as well. Like, all of them are, but, like, I, I just, Except, I just see him, I see him as a gay. porn star before this. Like, his job before the pack, probably how Fox found him, was, like, on a porn set someplace. Probably. Um, I do remember Dingo's backstory. Um, I don't think we'll get into that right now, but it's not really revealed in the show, so I guess we could also talk about it whenever. Mm-hmm. That can be a future episode. Yes, yes. My beautiful Dingo. He also has um, kind of like a mix of, you know, a mullet and a mohawk. Like He rocks kind of, it, okay? He, he looks does amazing. No, he, he looks really fucking hot with it. <laughs> So Dingo's, like, working on his lasso skills or whatever the hell he's doing. But then it looks mm. like a ninja fucking pops up and is going to attack <laughs> Fox. And, like, it gets really tense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then it's just, like, it's just some guy because he takes his mask off and he's like, Doo-hoo-ho-ho. He's got, like, a dopey <laughs> face. And Fox is like, later, Harvey. Work, work on, on those backflips, you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> she has, like, a southern accent all of a sudden. Uh, Does she? It's amazing. Maybe I just wrote it in a southern way. I don't know. Yeah, I did. No, I, I, I don't think she has a southern accent. I think but he I just walks away. So, okay, my question for you is, like, this always bugs the hell out of me. Oh, um, why is she saying goodbye to this guy, this, like, stunt performer, when they're she about to him. go on stage on Madison Square Garden? Uh, that's... Because no, after that's, this um... conversation, they're like, okay, now let's go out and perform, or whatever the hell she says. Like, why is he leaving? He should be getting Wait. ready for the show with them, right? Wait, is is it that night that's the Madison Square Garden? I, I think she says it is. No, no, okay, no. At the, the last line in this episode is, we'll figure it all out later. Right now, we've got a personal appearance to make. Which to me means uh, that they're going like on stage like right after this. Okay, yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> um... I don't know. I guess Harvey, he's just like the coffee guy, and he's just filling in for one of the extras, they just, maybe. They just let him dress up once in a while. <laughs> he likes to be a ninja. Let him be a ninja. <laughs> um, so, okay, so after this, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mention this part, because I know that you noticed it, but Wolf walks over to Fox, and he shows, like, an unusually big butt for his character model. 
Why is it unusually big? I feel like it's not usually that big. But no, like, but it is. The spandex pants looked, looked very tight on him in this sequence. No, he's a big over. man. Why wouldn't his... What? He's a big no. man with a big butt. He's got a lot of... You know, it's like sometimes... He jumped in the trunk? Sometimes you got a big heart. Sometimes you got a big butt. It just counts where you get the big, big <laughs> bigness. Well, I'll have to pay more attention to his butt from now on to see if it continues to be this big in the future. I, listen, um, I have paid very close, attentive <laughs> detail to his butt. And I know for future endeavors, it doesn't look as big as it does now, but it's he's still got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm he'll, saying, I'm he'll saying he'll it right now. It. So, okay, <laughs> would you like to deliver his line that he tells Fox? Oh, you don't even think about taking this from me. I, I won't take it from you. Okay, so as he walks over near Fox, he grabs some more barbells because you know he's just obsessed and dedicated to making his body completely fit and strong as hell. And he, uh, he, as he takes them, he comments that when they took this TV gig, they were promised fame, money, and action. He's not complaining about the first two, but he can use some more of the third. So uh -huh. he's he's a man looking for some action. Jackal gives this insane line where he says, "Sounds like the Wolf Man is getting bored," but like he says it in that weird way that he like every line he delivers is just so bizarre, just because of how he says it. Yeah, he's a weird guy. Um, but then okay, and then hyena right behind him, his sister. She says, hey, hey, "Maybe a new haircut would help." And she, like, clicks her, like, claws together. Um, Sid, what the fuck does this line mean? So, um, <laughs> growing up, I <laughs> hated Jackal and Hyena with a passion for some reason. <laughs> um, because they always teased Wolf. They have a tendency to poke at his ego and just try to kind of find ways to kind of crack that fragile masculine shell like, so is just, that like, what a... they're doing here like they're yeah, teasing they're, him about his they're... hair yeah you know, pretty it looks much bad yeah i, I was guess... honestly confused like because of how she delivers it i thought it was like a sexual thing like she has a hair cutting kink see no i'm just saying what i thought back then but like now oh. that you brought that up um i was gonna <laughs> say that it does kind of seem like a mildly sexual comment like, like i feel gonna... like well for one like every line she ever delivers has like a weird sexual undertone to it uh, i don't know i also feel like she has a new kink every episode she's in probably hyena's I mean, a very sexual person she is she's like <laughs> i'm afraid of her but like if they're making fun of his hair i think that's weird because I... she has the same fucking haircut that wolf does I, it's because wolf is a furry like, is that the joke, though, that they have the same haircut? So she's like, I'll cut he, yours so that we're different? <laughs> maybe, look, Wolf has, like, the longest hair in the group. I yeah, but, like, other than the, if you cut away the ponytail, like, he and Hyena, are, like, it looks the same don't, don't, to me. Don't even, don't even remark about cutting off his hair. <laughs> I like it long. There are so many mullets in this episode. Um, that's that's because it's very it's a very gay episode. Are you saying that mullets are like a gay haircut? Are they not? I I don't know. <laughs> well, I think they are. I'm but, saying it right he... now. Mo on the record, mullets are gay. Wow. Lifestyle. I'll have to remember that. Yeah. Um, so Wolf replies to that. All he says is like, I don't need any suggestion from you two clowns. Which is the correct response to anything Hyena and Jack will say, I think. Honestly. Um, oh my god. Okay, so let me do this line. He, um, <laughs> this is my favorite line in the entire episode. He says, hey, Wolf's... Oh my god. Okay, let me restart that. Hey, Wolf's right, Fox. This is a cushy gig, but we're all getting soft. Flab as I am now, I probably wouldn't last a week in a Central American war. So, um, <laughs> Central America is an area in North America which is populated with ethnic <laughs> groups and is on the border of the Caribbean Sea. 
Thank you. Yeah, we know what Central America is. No, I, I needed to look it up just to, like, reassure myself, like, okay, I need to make that sure that's you weren't having a stroke he... listening to this. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, but you also forgot the most important part is when he's talking about how flabby he is, he's punching himself in the abs. Yes, he punches his abs, shot. but also, like, as he does that, it doesn't seem like he's flabby at all. Like, nothing no. makes any sense. Yeah, he's, this line he's... is so oddly specific and like insane. <laughs> Dude, oh my the pack, God. the pack are just a bunch of fucking memes. They're they're shit lords, they're shit posters, <laughs> and we love them for it. But like, okay, like they have to like they all have to establish their personalities in like a single line. So this is like Dingo's first line, and I just we're just supposed to get from this that he's like he's a badass mercenary, or like he used to be a mercenary of some type, and he's he's hardcore. Um, but it's just, like, insane, because he tries too hard, and we just get this meme fodder instead. Like, I wouldn't last a week in a Central American war <laughs> is just, like, the line, the first line I always think of when it comes to Dingo, and I hate that. Also, okay, working on TV, though, like, he's probably in the best shape of his entire life, because he have to look good, like, for the cameras, so what the fuck is he even talking about? Listen, it's not the same as... <laughs> it's established with all the group, and he's agreeing with Wolf. It's not the same of getting a genuine, you know, like a, like a job or a hunt. Maybe they're uh -huh. just not made for TV. Maybe they just want to be, like, dumb dumb head mercenaries so you know what Wolf, Wolf does after Wolf, this Wolf ignores that weird ass Australian comment and then he just <laughs> he, he tops it off by saying his most iconic quote <laughs> as he just grunts and lifts those hefty barbells with his biceps just showing off and he's just like birds gotta fly fish gotta swim <laughs> Wolf's got to hunt, and then he just picks up the barbells and throws them across the room at them. Hyena and Jackal. For no they reason! They really jump out of the way, and it breaks through a fucking wall. <laughs> and then he's just kind of, we see like this close-up shot of his face, and he just gives this like little like, like alpha male smile, and he's all sweaty, and the sweat's like He just sort of like, smirks animated. at the hole he's made, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I showed that wall a thing or two. God, he's so he's so fucking stupid. I can't. And they also animate this like beautiful like line of sweat going yes, like, yes. down his face as he as he just smiles at the wall for no reason. Ah, uh, yes, my bath oh water. Oh my god! And then like, but the best part, like, no one else even reacts to him doing this. Like, not even hyena the, and jackal. No, it's who just he threw normal, the weights. It's at. normal behavior for him. That's the best. Like they part. just expect this from him by now they're like okay like whatever he has a diva moment every time they finish like <laughs> shooting an episode or something it's like every goddamn day with this guy he's oh just he's, he's just really gay <laughs> he's just really so fucking gay and stupid he doesn't know what to do with it all and he just throws weights through walls because he can oh my god uh okay so uh, fox uh, walks over and she says, well, since you're all itching for action, let me show you what came in today's mail with no return address and no explanation. I like how she says that. She says everything in, like, a vaguely seductive way. Have you noticed this? I did! I took comments on that a lot. She's just a hot um, person. Look, my first comment, uh, <laughs> when I noticed how seductive she was, was just, um, I wrote down mommy in my notes. <laughs> I don't know I why. I feel like a I lot guess... of her fans, like, want her to step on them. Who the fuck would it? <laughs> Fox is the best girl. Like, Change my mind. I also get the feeling like she's not trying to, to seduce who she's talking to, but like she's just that hot that all of her lines just come out that way, like on their own. She kind of reminds me of like she has this sort of social openness about her that allows her to get what she wants out of people, kind of. It reminds mm -hmm. me of Black Widow a little. Okay. Like Black Widow for Marvel? Yeah. Hmm. She does that. I'm thinking in, more I think... Domino from X Factor. That's a deeper cut. Because she also has a fucked up eye tattoo, and she's also just a very hot person. I'll send you pictures of Domino later. Yeah. You do that. Um, but okay, so she has this envelope, um, which she takes some photos out, and 
um, the pack goes over to look at them. The first line from them is Dingo saying, Stone me! Haha, <laughs> humor. <laughs> and uh, Jackal is beside him, just giving this shitlord smirk, and he's all like, Interest. <laughs> And Wolf uh, is just uh, in the fucking back looking over Dingo's shoulder. And it's a bunch of naked and... photos of Goliath. Like, they, she, <laughs> she leaked Goliath's nudes to them. <laughs> it's actually, um, it's actually pictures of Goliath fighting the cyborg gargoyles from the last episode, interestingly enough. Right. And they're very high detailed close shots of him pummeling them, and we see his muscles and his pecs and stuff. Right, so as I and... was saying, it's naked photos of Goliath. Um, yes. Hyena says, uh, she says that she read something in the Daily Tattler, which sounds like a sex mag to me, but it's probably like a what newspaper. The... I'm pretty <laughs> sure the Daily Tattler is just an actual Oh, what, is it? <laughs> Hold on, I, I, I might... <laughs> Daily Tattler. I feel is, like they. Okay, it's, no, it's like the Daily. The first thing I see. The first thing I see when I search up Daily Tattler on Google is just the Gargoyles wiki. Okay, so yeah, it's a it's a paper that they made up for the show, but it sounds like uh, it sounds raunchy to me. Um, the Daily Tattler's American Entertainment News publication. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay, they use it as the covers for bad guys. Like everyone got their own little uh, cover photo for it. Yes. Um, yes. She, so she says that she read about gargoyles but, in this newspaper. But Hyena reading the news... <laughs> She's probably only reading the tabloids. Or like the comics. That's probably the craziest part about her character is that she not only is psychotic, um, but she reads the news on top of all well, that. Well, okay, it's like tra there's like trashy newspapers out there, though, which I get the feeling is like what the Daily Tattler is. They just, they put like uh, yeah. like celebrity scandals and shit like that, which like she'd be all about and into. Because she's like, yeah, powerful people getting taken down a notch. God, they're all so trashy. I just imagine um, all of them are just constantly living in dumpsters. <laughs> well, we know except for Fox. We know that Wolf does. We know that Wolf does. He prefers it that way. So, okay, so yeah, so she says that she's heard stories about the gargoyles in this newspaper, and then uh, Jackal is like, right, and alligators <laughs> live in the sewers. What? <laughs> Why does he say that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, did he grow up in New York? People in New York don't talk like that. <laughs> I don't know. Because he sounds British, but hyena sounds southern, but they're twins. Like, are they were, were they raised separately? He's probably just watched a lot what of happened? BBC TV shows. <laughs> yeah. And so no, Wolf is like, probably. what are we even talking about? Like, he's completely confused. Um, he's, oh, he's so stupid. So Wolf, I mean, I keep getting them confused. Fox is like, imagine hunting something like this. And she holds up a pic of, like, Goliath's massive dick. Uh, his canonically massive dick. Because we know his dick is, like, it's uh, relative to the rest of his body size. Yes, he's he, he canonically Goliath is one. Is he as hunter? Is, is Wolf Hunter, though? Is, is Wolf, you know, on that well, same level? I feel like when Wolf is looking at this picture, like, he's doing that internal math. Because, like, he needs to know See, this, too. I love it, because it does kind of look like they're all, like, freaking out because someone sent them a dick pic. <laughs> the biggest dick they've and ever seen. And Wolf is just like, oh, he just rushes over, he's just like, is it bigger than mine? <laughs> That's just how he is. It gives him this identity crisis. No, I'm the guy with the biggest dick. If I don't have that anymore, then what am I? That's his whole fucking character right there <laughs> that you just explained. Like, that is the wolf dilemma. Oh my god. So then, okay, so then Fox delivers that line that I mentioned before, how they're gonna, they've are gonna they got a personal appearance to make. And then the view switches to Madison Square Garden. Uh, so as we transition away, I think now we can, um, we can talk about... Okay, there's at some point I do want to talk about my fix my historical fixation on Wolf, but I feel like I already did. I feel like you did too. <laughs> Is there more? I don't think so. But there's also the email uh, we opened from last. Do we want to? Okay, do you want to talk about that email now? We don't have to talk about the thing with like um with like Fox and that one individual, but we can talk about her relationship with uh, the pack members. <laughs> Uh, okay. So this email yes. was sent to us by Rembrandt. 
um, on Fur Affinity yes. or that snarky Remy on Twitter. We mentioned it last episode. We went through a bunch of the questions. Um, but a whole lot of them we couldn't bring up because it had, like, spoilers for the rest of the show. Um, but what these were were um, things that Greg Weissman has concluded, uh, has confirmed as canon on his blog when fans ask him questions. Actually, this is stuff that apparently there was an After Dark panel at a convention. This was at Convergence 2014, uh, where Greg Weissman answered, like, adult questions about the characters. Um, so we, we got this information. I think this was posted on, like, Tumblr or something, or, like, a Chan website. Um, so, you know, this information is as accurate as as you can imagine that would be. Um, but it all seems very correct and in character, so I'm just going to go and say that it is 100% true, because um, I want it to be. But, yes, um, Remy actually sent us a follow-up email saying that, but um, I won't get into the whole email now, but I just wanted to address that. So, okay, so towards the end of his first email, one of the uh, tidbits of information here was, uh, so Fox canonically has had sex with almost the entire pack. Uh, she's yes. had sex with Dingo, which I can very easily mm-hmm. see, because uh, Dingo oh, is too. just like a, a dumb, beefy himbo. I feel like he's a very, like... He has a high libido, so, like, as soon as he's turned on, he just, like, go along with whatever she wanted to do, I feel like. That's interesting you say that, because I have someone on Twitter recently who theorized that Dingo was asexual. I saw that, too. I, I think he's asexual in the same way that, um, that, like, Eddie Brock is asexual with Venom, which is, like... <laughs> right. Like, I can see that interpretation. My own interpretation is that Dingo is hypersexual and just, like, jerks off all mm. the time. She's had sex with Dingo. Uh, Fox has had sex with Hyena, which confirms that those two are both bisexual. Um, Fox has had sex with Jackal, but only when Hyena <laughs> watches. <laughs> which to me confirms that Jackal and Hyena are in a relationship of their own, or that they're just like sex weirdos. Uh, they're probably um, both. I don't know. Yeah, they are. The only member of the pack who Fox has not, not had, had sex, sex with, with is, is Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> Which, when I read that, like, my fucking serotonin just, like, had, like, an overdose of boost. I was just so happy. That's basically confirmation that Wolf is gay, right? I mean, because who wouldn't have sex with Fox? I don't think it's 100% confirmation, but I do I do read into that. <laughs> um, I, I just, I really just want to hear the words out of Greg Weissen's mouth. But I, I do... want him to say it. Yes, yes. <laughs> But no, I do read that as a huge part of, um, it's, it's just crazy because I've, I've fixated on Wolf for like a long time and I'm just like, oh yeah, no, this is a gay coded character. Um, but to have that kind of little piece of information from, you know, the creator himself, albeit at an after dark panel with fans and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but, um, just that little piece of information that she, um, is so open with the pack members that she sleeps with them, but... Um, doesn't sleep with Wolf. Um, that just, that, that, I, I read a lot into that. Like, she doesn't that sleep with Wolf, but Dingo has slept with Wolf. That's our headcanon, but... That is a true headcanon <laughs> that is, uh, 100% valid and factual. Thank you. Honestly. Uh, it's real. It happened. Because Wolf had to establish himself as, like, the alpha male in the pack. Right, of course. Which, to him means that he has to top, like, all the other guys, which is only Dingo, because uh, Jackal doesn't count. Oh, no, Jackal doesn't count. I reread your, sto- I reread your story right before getting into this call. You know, oh my God. I, I might have I <laughs> so, okay. jerked off to it a little so, bit. So, we, we've, we've done a commission of Wolf and Dingo <laughs> together, where Wolf is giving Dingo, like, a really hard spanking in the locker room. Yes. Uh, because we like the characters and spanking, mm-hmm. and thought we wanted to combine them. Mm-hmm. Um... So yeah, if you want to see our headcanon, just look on either of our, our FA accounts, yes. and it's, it's right there for everyone to look at. Honestly, um, so. <laughs> but it's very good. And yes, I love that little piece of information. It makes me uh, love the pack more, uh, it makes me love Fox a lot more. I got mad respect for her already, but oh like... Oh my god, she's so hot. She's so great. Um, like, I feel... Do you think she gathered the pack members, like, because of, like, their skills and, like, putting together a television show? Or just because she wanted to fuck all these people and was like, I'll gather the, 
the fuckiest bunch of people I possibly can, I, and then make myself their queen. I think a huge part of Fox's character is establishing uh, those sort of strong like like she she's very open i think as a character and i think people she works with mm -hmm. um you know like i feel like sex is partly for the thrill but also partly for just getting to understand the people you're working with better um mm -hmm. i think it's mm -hmm. kind of like a mishmash of both of those um irregardless well, she's an open person she's in open relationships yes yes it's beautiful mm -hmm. she's the best girl changed my mind <laughs> like I, I like okay we can argue about Demona and Elisa or whatever but it's like Fox it just I'm sorry I get... Fox is like the middle ground between those two characters almost kind of because like she's more like she's more sane than Demona is but she's definitely way more psychotic than Elisa she's... is she's yeah no <laughs> um she's in that kind of chaotic neutral territory I'd say yeah, but she is also extremely hot. Oh god, no, yeah, she is. Um, it doesn't help that I also have a thing for redheads. <laughs> oh my god. Which is new information. She hits a lot of buttons for a lot of people. Yes, me and, me included. Um, but, okay, so, we have a lot more episode to go through. We have, okay, but that was like the densest scene, where I feel like we have the most to talk about. So everything after this will be like, you know, smooth sailing. It'll be so smooth from now on. No. Uh, so okay, we no. we see Madison Square Garden, which looks <laughs> completely sold out. Um, the stands are filled with, with chanting tweens, who they just keep saying like "pack, pack." See, I pack. didn't know what the fuck they were chanting at first until like they showed the audience again <laughs> later. Like I was listening super closely. Granted, it was in the middle of the night. And I was super sleep deprived, and I'm just like, okay, they're either saying "fight" or "pack," and I'm not sure which of those they're saying. <laughs> They're saying they're they're chanting to see their their favorite bisexuals on stage. Yes, this is what they want. God, I uh, love so up above. <laughs> no, go ahead. I was just it was another. You side, go ahead. It was another side comment about the pack. I just love that everyone in there, um, like we just had canon as somewhat not straight. To a, a I like extent. we knew this years yes, ago, we did. but now it's been confirmed. Well, now we like, know there's real. like confirmation. It happened. Yes. Um, Jackal might be the only straight guy, though, but I'm not sure. I feel like, like Jackal's also had sex with Dingo. Probably. I feel like Dingo's, like, the slut of the group. Okay, but is head. he gonna outrank Fox, though? <laughs> no. No. Definitely not. You can't outrank Fox. She's a fucking queen. So it's, it's, uh, it's Broadway, Lexington, and Brooklyn. And Broadway has one of his arms just, like, wrapped around Lex, like, holding him, like, his little gay buddy that he has. Because mm -hmm. Lex is, like, so into this show. Like, he's taught Pack fever. Oh, my God, um, yeah. And he's so anxious for the show to start. And Brooklyn is just, like, next to him, like, bemused. He's just like, calm down. Like, it'll start soon. He's, he's me at every concert right now. <laughs> Like, but Brooklyn and Broadway, they're treating him like, like their kid brother almost. Yeah. Um, even though Lex is the same age that they are. But just because he's like, he's being so cute and gay right now. They're just he's like, just, oh, he's adorable. He's just, they gotta be supportive. They are so supportive and I love them. Yes, yes. Um, anyways, so uh, the pack finally appears on stage after like this puff of smoke comes out and the announcer introduces them. And they all kind of just, like, do these poses, and we see, like, a quick shot, shot of each of them. In my notes, all I said was that they all pose bisexually. They do. Like, they, they are hashtag bisexual. <laughs> Anyways, I put in my notes that it's here where I realize the audience is shouting pack over and over, because I could hear them more clearly. <laughs> um, and, like, the evil ninjas show up on the stage. Yes, okay, but it's funny because the announcer says it in this, like, really over-the-top way. He says, oh, <laughs> no, it's the evil And ninjas. then the whole audience just starts booing. They fucking hate <laughs> these ninjas. They're like, bow, fuck you. And when the ninjas show up, Wolf's hair does this kind of, like, <laughs> little sonic spin with his ponytail. Like, it looks like the... Okay, it has, it, okay, so he he spins around to confront the ninjas, but his his ponytail in the back 
does like this loop de loop. It looks it looks like, like the <laughs> Mozilla Firefox logo almost, or the old one, the old one. <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> okay, so then there's a there's a stage fight scene with the ninjas attacking. Um, like all of them, we get like you know glimpses of all the pack fighting. Fox and own. Wolf are like the only ones that fight hand to hand combat. Interestingly enough. Um, which is why they're usually side by side in the pack's promotional imagery. And I put in my notes, and they who says gay and lesbian solidarity doesn't exist? I know, like they're living proof of it right there. Yes, and we also see a few brief glances of Wolf's firm butt as he's uh, avoiding the attacks. And oh my might God. I just say, if the show had a better budget and could get more lines in with their animations, we would absolutely just be seeing full on man ass. Yeah, just like butt crack all the way down. We do kind of see. Uh, we see. We see some nice views of Dingo's butt too. Not that I was looking at that. No, you were. Uh, but I was. You were looking at it, and you were just jerking off. You're like, yes, thank you, Dingo. <laughs> so, um, uh, but let's see. Okay, so there's fighting. Uh, the announcer is saying like, but ninjas don't fight with honor like the pack does. <laughs> I forgot. And then teamwork. I forgot That's the announcer. The key. Like that. he's just saying like you know like kid friendly phrases basically. It's, it reminds me of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, it reminds me of that too. But um, just like goofy Lexington fun. is just like in the rafters in awe of just this action packed gay display as anyone would be. At one point, Dingo like ropes two of the ninjas together. And then their heads just bash into each other for no reason, and I enjoy that part a lot. Yeah, we don't see them fall down or anything, that just kind of <laughs> happens. So, okay, so Brooklyn is like, these guys are all right. Like, he's starting to see he's why just, like, he's rubbing so his chin. Yeah, he's like checking out Wolf's ass, probably. Um, who wouldn't? Uh, but then the show, like, immediately ends... Like, it's over after less than a minute. Look, I'm it's sure there's, sad. like, some passage of time that they didn't establish. Look, the, the running time. <laughs> it's a 20-minute running time. Okay, show over. Uh, everyone's going home. Uh, Broadway and, Le- and Brooklyn are like, okay, like, time to go. But Lexington wants to stay behind uh, for some reason. Ooh. So his two bros, like, fly off. Uh, and then he's then Lex by himself is like, I'm, I'm going, going for, for it. it. He's so like cute and excited. Which to me, that sounds like, like the first time you come out to somebody, or, <gasps> right? Like, when you want, when you want to like, uh, like make a romantic overture to someone for the first time. It's like he's getting his courage up for that. Yes, yeah, and that's a big um thing with like, um later. That that's a huge thing that also ties into like the meaning of the like this whole episode and such. Um, there's stuff about trust, there's stuff about, you know, what you believe in the media, uh, just a lot of, uh, lot of, uh, leaps of faith going on here with, uh, with this episode. Uh, so we go and see the pack, they're walking backstage after the show, and, um, I think, is it Wolf who says this? He yeah, says, it's Wolf. Well, another day? Another, another half, half million, million dollars. dollars. And I'm just like, is that what they earned? <laughs> yes. <laughs> My god. <laughs> Uh, and Lex is up above them, like, in, in, the, in rafters. the rafters again, but Fox notices. She's like, what's that? Yes, and then Lex drops down. Uh, Dingo immediately just draws a fucking gun. And Jackal's all, and what point- the fuck is this thing? <laughs> 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 but then Lex starts talking to them. He's like, whoa, relax, I'm not an enemy. And they're all sort of like, oh, it talks. Uh, so once that gets out of the way, though, yeah, so Lex introduces himself, um... He tells them that he's a warrior just like they are. Wolf is surprised that the gargoyles know how to talk, kind of like how Elisa was when she first realized Goliath could talk. Mm-hmm. Which, is, you know, just goes in hand in hand. But they both end up really wanting to fuck gargoyles. Yeah, well, I mean, when Elisa realized that Goliath could talk, that was the moment she wanted to fuck him, according to Greg Weissman. <laughs> So I feel. Do you think that now that Wolf realized Goliath that Gargoyles can talk, he also wants to fuck Goliath? Even he's more just now? like, oh my god, wait, where's that bigger one? He's thinking. <laughs> yeah, just the first line he says. He says like, "Hey, Fox, this one's not as big as the one in the picture." Um, for some reason, uh, Wolf. I, I okay. I put in my notes. Uh, we see just how big Wolf's crotch region is. What the fuck? Why is his dick so big? <laughs> Fucking David Bowie from Labyrinth up in this bitch is all I wrote in all he, caps. He is showing bulge. There is so much bulge. Like, just, um... <laughs> ugh. It, it, 
He, he, you know, um, okay, so you can probably relate to this a little, but you know how you do, like, the art of, like, Inarag, and he's, like, got the horn, and he's, like, he really just wants to shove it up people's asses for some reason? <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> I have this weird compulsion when I see, like, a guy in his, like, really, like, noticeable bulge to just headbutt that area. I don't oh know God. why. I just want to, like, headbutt it and see if my head bounces off of it, like a trampoline wow. or something. <laughs> Do you feel like that would happen with you and Wolf? I, I want my head as close to that junk as possible. I want to just ready up my <laughs> head like a goat preparing to ram his elders and oh just God. run forth and just lock my cranium into that bulge region and i th- it's through that i get a good sense of his like um uh, male sensitivity yeah well you know you have to find that out somehow i have to find so. out how he reacts to getting head butted in the crotch which i imagine would be very painful I feel like he would get mad and then be like, if you want it that bad, then how about in your mouth? And then he just, like, shoves it inside you. Um, joke's on him. I'm already, like, balls deep (laughs) against my chin. Fuck yeah. Okay, so whatever's happening in Wolf's groin area, uh, Fox approaches Lex here, and then she, like... Hmm? Wolf... And then she, like... What about Wolf? <laughs> um, you might have already said this, but he does kind of lean next to Fox. He's all, hey, Fox, this one's not as big as the one in the picture you showed. But before he finishes the sentence, Fox, like, elbows him to shut him up. He She oh, elbows he him elbows in the tits. Him. Oh, my God. Wait, does she? She does, like, right in his, like, <laughs> chest area. Um, And I really got this. I wanted to find that picture. You know the one that's going around Twitter with, like, the guy and the girl, they're both in the car, and they have, like, the that's, white... That's Wolf and Fox. That's Wolf and Fox on their way to pick they're up the rest of the... They're just, like, showing their, like, their very large chests, and they're both wearing tank tops. That's them on their way to, like, pick up the rest of the pack from, like... Oh, my God. Target practice or We have shit. to make that edit later. Oh, my God, yes! <laughs> okay. So, okay. <laughs> so, Fox approaches Lex, though. Um, and then she, she, like, sensually... Strokes Lex's chin, like while making bedroom's eye, bedroom's eye, blah, bedroom eyes at him, and Lex like responds to this. Like I, I feel like his sexuality got confused See, by how hot Fox is. I think uh, what it is is um, it's like I said, Fox likes to be very open with people and kind of get what she wants through that sort of um sort of charm she portrays and Mm -hmm. she doing this she just kind of struts up to lexington kneels down looks him in the eye and just kind of like caresses his face and she's just like i've heard stories of a gargoyle like you only much bigger and then then wolf is like you know we'd love to meet your friend and he cocks his brow and everything (laughs) and it's funny (laughs) That uh, she's doing this right after Wolf is, like, complaining about wanting the bigger one. Yeah, but she she also wants the bigger one, but she knows she has to approach Lex in, like, like my a first, sexy my way. First, my first thoughts when I saw that scene was just, like, oh my god, mommy, please. <laughs> just, oh my god. She's, she's, she has no right to be that hot. Her ass looks really neat in the jumpsuit as well, I noticed. Like, you, she you, always looks good. Yeah, yeah. You but, can tell she keeps in shape. They all do. Except Dingo, who I guess is going flabby. Yeah, oh, flabby. Too mm-hmm. flabby to be in a, a Central, Central American, American War. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scoop, sir. <laughs> so, so, okay, so Lex agrees to, like, uh, bring Goliath back to them, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point, I start feeling really bad for Lex. Oh, God, yeah. Because, like, he's just such a fan of them. And he's, like, he just wants, he just wants to, like his friends, his new friends to meet, like, his old friends. Mm -hmm. Which is what I like to do whenever I meet someone new. I'm just like, I want to introduce you to, like, everyone I already know, so that we can all be friends together. Like, that's what I always want to do. Yes, yes. But it doesn't always work out the best way. Yeah, no, I also feel like, um, I feel like, even if the show isn't outright saying it, I feel like Lex is picking up on, like, 
the LGBT vibes here, and on some level he understands that, like, he's finally met other people who are like himself. Yes. Like, are you getting that, too? I am absolutely 100% getting that. So, like, he... That's another reason he just... He really wants to be accepted by the pack. He wants them to like him. Mm -hmm. Um, He's doing what, like, a lot of, like, young gay, like, young LGBT people do. Like, he's trying to build community where he Mm -hmm. can, because you sort of have to build your own community. You have to, let, like, go out and find your own in a lot of ways. Yeah, and um, it gets really more uh, apparent with that, with the following, like, conversation he has um, back at the castle. Uh, but mm-hmm. Before we get into the rest of the episode, um, I think we should stop our recordings where we are now and just kind of take just test out to see that everything turns out okay after a brief intermission sid runs to get a soda all right let me crack open a cold one well it's not really cold it's like room temperature but i'm doing shit a cold one with the boys yes or as vampires would put it a boy with the cold ones what Oh, because they're the cold ones. Vampires are cold, and they drink from boys. <laughs> I get it. So we transition uh, to the gargoyles back at the castle, who are anticipating the dawn soon, and they're worried because Lexington hasn't made it back mm. yet. Yeah, Hudson um, says something like, "Oh, he always tucks it close." Oh, uh, Goliath. Con- Goliath says that. Okay. Goliath says that, but like, I'm pretty sure the only ones we've seen cut it close in the show is Goliath himself and Hudson. Like, they've both yeah. missed the dawn, like, several times by now. I do think that that line was meant to imply that Lexington just has, like, a bunch of wanderlust in the modern world. Like, he really just wants to immerse himself in it. Yeah, he's always hitting the, the discos, those gay clubs, and he doesn't come back when he's supposed to. Yes, but... Um, the discos, as soon as the leather go- bars. <laughs> but uh, but they but then Lexington does get there, and Goliath immediately goes into daddy mode. He's like, "Where were you?" Yes. Yeah. Both Hudson and Goliath are standing side by side, and Hudson's just—I mean, Goliath's just got his arms crossed uh-huh. and he's looking down. Yeah, at they're him. like a united front right now, and this this upstart wealth. He's he's got his dad pants mm-hmm. on, or his dad loincloth, if you'd rather. So Lex is all like, <laughs> I, he says that he's made them some new allies. Then he starts talking about like how fucking cool the pack is. They're heroes, like the gargoyles are. They defend the innocent, and they do it on television. He says. Um, and Goliath is both just like really like concerned and he asks in just like this stern voice he's like you let them see you uh-huh. yeah but then Deluxe gets like really defensive here he's like yeah, and why not you made friends with Elisa and then Goliath says that that eternal parent line that was different yeah <laughs> that's such a parent line um, and Hudson points out that the rest of their conversation is going to have to wait till nightfall because Don is there and Goliath and Lexington kind of turn to stone in this little father-son yeah, face-off they're, they're going Ur at each other. Um, and, like, normally in the show, I feel like there'd be, like, now there'd be daytime scenes with, like, the human characters. But for this one, we just smash cut just, right to the next night and just right back, back to the argument, night. like, immediately. Which I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and Lexington just like is just like, what makes Elisa different? She's because because she's a defender of the innocent like the pack is mm-hmm. is what he says, and it's it's here where we take in just how little the gargoyles know about reality television, right? Yeah, because they think that the pack TV show like is real life and that really happened, and like there's they're not and, like the they, show that they, they, they just watch really, Madison Square Garden they believe the evil ninjas. In the evil ninjas. Yeah, like they think that was a real thing. Like they're not aware it's like a fantasy or it's just like a story or fiction that they're yeah. that they're looking at. Uh, yeah, because Hudson defends uh, Lex. He's like, I've also seen the pact on the picture box. They're constantly attacked by these evil ninjas. <laughs> oh my god, I love Hudson. So it's just like. Uh, they're such himbos. Oh my god. It's like I said earlier with the wantingness to want to try and accept um, one's, like, perception over what reality is like. And there's some sort of, like, symbolism diluted there in the writing. Mm-hmm. 
and Lexington insists that, you know, he's not stupid, he didn't tell them all their information, and didn't inform them their powers or abilities or where they live, which, this is starting to sound a lot like a Stranger Danger kind of monologue. Sort of, yeah. But, I mean... Well, no, I mean, it is, though. Because it's like, it's a, it's a child wandering away from home, meeting some strangers, coming back and telling them about it, and, like, they're like, why would you tell them all this stuff about us? And... He's like, I'm not stupid. I didn't tell him all this stuff about us. Yeah. Like, there's there's the um, the balance you have to keep between, like, wanting to find, uh, like, kindred spirits who can accept you and also, like, keeping safe yourself. And I feel like before the internet, it was um, much more difficult to do that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I do feel like it's... a large part of this episode with Lex in particular is... Sort of mirrors like the the day experience in the pre net days yes. of having to like find your clan, so to speak, um, through mm-hmm, like absolutely. personal ads and stuff like that, rather than through online chatting. Um, and how like it's a scary thing to do, and how like you don't know what'll happen. Like, what if they don't accept you? What if they're homophobic themselves? Right, of course. Uh, like, what if you're the victim of a fucking hate crime? Like, it's there's all this stuff you have to consider before you even begin to open up to other people it it really ties into what lexington goes on um in this little this nice monologue that i love uh where he talks about not wanting to hide from the world forever that there are kindred spirits out there and they need to be given a chance or else Um, they'll always be alone he says yeah he's he's it's clear here that he's definitely has this internal fear of Mm -hmm. winding up alone and, not, and like, you know, I don't know if this is intended in the show, but that the word alone also always brings to mind Demona with me because that's like the word associated with her a lot of the time. And like, mm. a, as we know, like she she has never opened up to human culture or any humans like at all, and she is she's forever alone for that reason. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, honestly. Like, um, they talk about how alone they are, but it's like, you know, uh, at least Goliath, uh, wound up, um, having his, you know, having, you know, the trio and Hudson and just the whole clan and Elisa. Yeah, he's got the um, Demona, Demona never really had anyone. She had Macbeth. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but let's not get into a... that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it got really serious for a minute there, and then we were just like, Macbeth. Macbeth is a funny guy. <laughs> okay, so Goliath does reluctantly agree after Lex pretty much like opens up his heart in this like heartfelt speech, and then the three are definitely mm-hmm. super happy about that. Um, so it's decided that Goliath and Lex will go together to meet the pack, like just the two of them. Mm-hmm. And if it's proven safe, then they can introduce the rest of the clan like afterwards. So the two of them fly off. Um, they go back to Pack Media Studios. Our favorite place at, at Madison Garden Square or Center, what, yeah, how, wherever the hell they it are. Is. Um, it's like a square in Madison's there. Well, it turns out to be a fucking trap. Um, the two of them get there, and the building has like all the lights out. Um, the two of them and go inside. Yeah, there's like sort of creepy music playing. Um, there is a really nice shot of Goliath's tail like flicking back and forth as he and Lex and walked in. Yeah. Um, and then, like, once they're inside, a spotlight suddenly shines, like, directly into their faces to blind them. And, like, yeah. there's a grenade that gets thrown at them. So it's a, it's a fucking action scene now. God yes. Damn it. And then I, they, they suddenly, they realize that, you know, Goliath even shouts, it's a trap, before just grabbing Lexington's arm uh-huh. and just running off with him while they're being shot He at. carries Lexington we, through so much of this episode. So much of this episode. <laughs> I'm so fucking jealous of Lexington. I know, like, he got carried last because, episode, too, but he was unconscious for it. In this episode, he, no, gets, he gets he just gets fully carried aware. so much by Goliath, <laughs> and he gets carried around by Wolf for a brief bit. Oh my god. Like, I wish I were Lexington. I wish I were this young, gay, happy-go-lucky gargoyle surrounded by hot gargoyle and other, he's, you know, weird He's living the men. fucking dream. But, okay, so the two of them, they run into, like, what it looks like the, the packed, like, television intro. Like, the same set that they filmed that on. Like, the, cor- the metal corridor, and there's, like, all these yes. traps and stuff that they have to avoid. Um... 
So Hyena shows up first. She like slashes at Lex, cuts him, knocking him, and over. then she like giggles and, and runs, runs away. away. Like she a little runs away bitch. laughing. <laughs> it's like a girl who it's it's like a kid who stole from the cookie I jar. Know, like, <laughs> <just kinda>, like... <laughs> so like Lex gets and... fucking furious as uh, here, and like he starts chasing after her. Because uh, he's like, force. you cowards, I thought you fought with honor. Like, he's so mad. Um, yeah, I would be pissed off, too. I mean, like, he put his trust in these people, and the first thing these guys are doing are trying to attack them. And he's just like... Right. Oh, so, like, God. all the times Delia's been betrayed already in the show, like, this is the first time that, like, Lex has, like, really been betrayed himself. So, like, yeah. he's just fucking flipping out. This is a really good building episode for Lex. It Kingdom. is such a good Lex episode. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he almost dies to a spike trap like immediately, but Delive pulls him back. Just Delive has to be the voice of reason for once, and he's not the one fucking going berserk. Um, and Lexington and Goliath both just tear through these spikes super badassly. It's amazing. As they... It's it's day yeah. fury is what we're seeing right it now. It is. Um, and then... they continue on this little trap maze until they encounter like a hallway or a room with like closing walls trapping in yeah this is like that scene in star wars where they're they're in the trash compactor and fox is like above in the rafters watching them i guess Mm -hmm. and she's just like welcome to the gauntlet normally the traps in here aren't lethal but we juice them up a little just for you too and i'm just like ugh, mommy please step on me she's a bad person um, she is. I love her. <laughs> so okay. So they're they're in this compactor for like a hot second, but then Goliath like he just has a fit of gay fury again. And he in this beautifully he animated up... fucking punch like goes right through the wall and then like rips the he fucking wall through apart to get the through the steel wall and tears at it like he's coming out of like a Looney Tunes episode. <laughs> And then he picks up some other steel device in the next room, picks that up, and creates another hole in another steel wall. Yeah, like, he's, and... he's so fucking done right now. He's like, I'll destroy every wall in this goddamn building. Like, but I'm getting the hell out of here right now. He's in dad mode. Like, don't fuck with his kids. Yeah, like, he brought his kid along on this, so, like, it's not cool. Um, they see a skylight, and they just, they climb up to it, and then they, they actually do get out. Um, the rest of the pack... Uh, just sort of stare after them, like, oh, we forgot they could do that. But then they all go out, and then Wolf says, Let, Let the, the hunt, hunt begin. begin. Yes. The the thrill of the hunt, even. The thrill? A... Oh, it's the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so... <Is> Goliath and <laughs> Lex fly to a nearby building. You mean they glide Le- to a nearby building. <laughs> and Lexington is still enraged that his trust was betrayed and they had attacked them. And Goliath responds with that they had likely planned to from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Lexington makes a comment about how they're worse than animals, and Goliath responds with, an animal hunts because it's hungry. These ones just do it for sport. Yeah, Lex is like, they're no better than animals, and Goliath's like, actually, they're fucking worse than animals, if you think about it. <laughs> Yes, and something that breaks my heart a little is what Lexington oh says my next. God. He's just like, I'm never trusting anyone again, and like, you can hear his voice crack and everything. Like, he sounds like he's literally crying as he's saying this. I know, um, and I hate it, but we're rewarded right after that with just a fucking explosive boomerang interrupting their conversation. <laughs> because Dingo's Australian, Dingo. so of course he has boomerangs. <laughs> Like, I, I didn't think it was a boomerang at first. I just put that in my notes because I thought it was funny. But no, no I look later on. It is. is a boomerang. Dingo's amazing. Stupid. He's so stupid. They're all so stupid and they're all so gay. He's so Yeah, because then he throws. He, like, wraps Goliath oh, in, like, this oh, rope yes, thing. Yes. What? Ding, ding, ding. Very first bondage scenario with Goliath, am I right? Wait, is this the very first one? Yes! I cannot yeah, believe he it been took tied this up yet? one. It was Dingo! He was the start! Dingo did it, everybody! <laughs> Dingo's lasso wraps around Goliath, restricting his movements and coiling around his pecs as he's struggling to yeah, get out of it. Yeah, his pecs and his and arms, he, and he, he's all flexing yeah. and struggling and like, Argh. And Dingo's just doing that Australian hick laugh in the background, very <laughs> Wolf Creek sounding. <laughs> but the bondage doesn't you know, last yeah. this time, because Goliath does just, like, snap the ropes... And then he stoops like Lexington up in his big manly arms, and they just, like, go off the fucking building. 
We describe that the same exact way in our notes. He <laughs> scoops Lexington up in his arms and runs runs off. Is what I put. <laughs> we think alike oh. sometimes. Great um, minds think alike. Lex insists he's all right though, and like he he makes Goliath actually put him down, and then they fly off the building together. Like Lex is so. Yeah fucking angry and hurt this whole episode like, like his voice acting just like is so good oh yeah no um oh god i was just looking it up when i was watching the episode i forget the name but the voice actor did a really good job here oh i don't know his name um, right away either uh uh tom uh, uh adcox, adcox hernandez. hernandez he does he does a bunch of voices he was the voice I noticed of felix that, the yeah. cat nice he was yes wait he's been in a soap opera He's been in uh, Falcon Crest as Brian. Okay, we have to look this guy up later. I, wonder I don't know what that is. I don't. I've never heard of Falcon Crest. Oh, he was in Scooby Doo and the Goblin King. The Goblin King, like Labyrinth, Jareth. Well, there, there's that direct to DVD Scooby Doo movie where they go to this fantasy world. And there's a Goblin King there. That sounds amazing. That they go to Labyrinth. Is there, I actually really liked that one because there's like a hot werewolf guy in it. Nice. Um, okay, back to this episode. Um, so the next person they'd run into is Jackal, who is, like, waiting in their flight path somehow, and he throws yeah. a knife, which cuts these, like, electrical <laughs> the wires, cords, which the cords then cut- electrocute the gargoyles who fly under them. This is a very involved plan. This is a very <laughs> elaborate plan. Like, like he's, he, it's like he had this setup redetermined in case this ever happened. Yeah, like... <laughs> Uh, it worked, though, like, uh, in classic Gargoyles get... fashion, the bizarrely convoluted plan works perfectly. Yes, like, they get electrocuted, and, um, it's also the first scene where, like, a character is electrocuted in the show as and, well. Yeah, that's going to happen Pax a just... lot from now on, too. The pack's just breaking boundaries, They're, honestly. they're like, very kink-friendly, I feel like. They are. They establish the kinks predetermined. Um, but Goliath is like in fucking boss mode this episode because he recovers in midair, uh, grabs Lexington again so he doesn't fall. Then he grabs onto a fire they escape. Can, they grab onto a fire escape, try climbing up the building, but we just hear Hyena laugh again and there's just another explosion, I guess. Right, so this time they, they fall all the way down to the street and then they just lie there. Uh, it looks like they're, into the tra- looks like they're they fucking fall into some dead. trash cans. Yeah. Whenever a character falls into trash cans, it means they're knocked out. Wait, did they fall into trash cans? They do. Did they? In the trash cans. The trash cans just disappear. I will go back in the episode. They no, I believe do. you. Okay. Well, I'm glad yeah. that the trash was there to uh, to cushion their fall. Although after it, they're still lying there. It looks like they're at least unconscious. Like their eyes are closed. They are unconscious, um, kind of. And then all and five members the... of the pack are slowly closing in on them. Like they're all smiling evilly. And you're like, oh shit, what's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. And of course, they had to censor the rest of the episode because they didn't want to show, you know, Wolf and Goliath having hardcore anal sex. <laughs> Um, no, no, what happens instead, what happens instead of that, before they can reach them, though, um, I guess there's just, like, a family walking nearby, and a bunch of, a couple of kids recognize them from the show, and they recognize they're, like, the pack, running, yeah, from TV. They recognize the pack, and I guess they're just walking in this weird alleyway area. Okay, so these and... kids, they're named Billy and Susan, and these are recurring <laughs> characters, Sid. God uh, damn it, of course they are. The next... As soon as I heard their names get addressed. <laughs> the next time we see them, will be it'll, it'll be in the comic series, but they'll be in the trick or, the, uh, the Halloween episode, Trick or Treating. Uh, and their, their parents the are with episode. them too in this scene. Uh, we see Billy and Susan's mom again. She's in the first episode of season three, and she's going to become oh a quarry God. man. So there's no, there's no season three. She basically becomes uh, the Gargoyle's equivalent no of the se- KKK. There's no season three. No, the the first episode of season three is canonical, and she's in that one. Oh my god, that's oh she's she's god. a quarry man. I'm gonna <laughs> beat my head on the wall for fifty minutes. She doesn't have a name, sadly. She's only known as Billy and Susie's and Susan's mom in the witty. But I hope that one day she does get a name for herself, so we can call her something. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, these kids, I guess, Billy and Susan, um, run up kids. to them. 
Yeah, two just fucking white kids not minding their own business. Um, Fox is our, you know, she's already exhausted at the side of this. She's just like, how wonderful, our adoring public. Uh-huh. And the hyena's right next to her, and she's like, perfect timing. And but then the just kids, like, oh. they immediately run up to Wolf, though. Yeah! They pick Wolf <laughs> as, like, the most child-friendly oh person to, like... <laughs> This, this this me as a child? <laughs> uh, I mean, Billy does this... sort of look like you. Oh, God. <laughs> does he? I'm looking this up right now. This little blonde boy. Oh, no, I was a little blonde boy once. <laughs> Billy Green. Yeah, he does look like me. God fucking damn it. <laughs> I want Wolf to carry me. I would, I would run up to Wolf even... As a child, unaware of his his um, personal hindrances, I bet Wolf could be a great dad. He'd be a awful he'd, he'd be a father. great deadbeat dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, so while the kids are like they're heckling the pack with all these questions, um, then the gargoyles just start recovering on their own. So then the parents are like, you know, get back here, you fucking little. You little snots, like they're they're filming a movie or something. You'll be in the way. Um, and then Wolf, this is probably like Wolf's smartest moment. He tells the kids that the gargoyles yes. are dangerous monsters sent by the evil ninjas. He's using his his inflated ego to do what he does best. This is like the first and only time I think we ever see him use his head, though. So I just thought it was notable that he was able yeah, he was able to trick some children. Like that's how smart he is. <laughs> it, it, that's the extent of his intelligence. He's smarter than a five-year-old. <laughs> so he stoops. Are they, he, they don't look like five no. They're like ten, probably. And he stoops them up. He brings them back to their parents. You were probably jealous of that. Um, I I did. I you know it's like I I never really get it when like women in like post on media talk about how hot you know male celebrities are when they're like holding babies and stuff. Um, but this scene where Wolf just kind of carries the kids away, I'm like, oh, okay, you, yeah, no, I kind of get, get it. it now, yeah. I get it, you know, like, just the, the, him in that kind of, I don't, I, like, he's definitely would make an awful father, but him and just that kind of, like, father limelight, I'm just like, oh my god. Mm. What are we talking about? Uh, Gargoyles. Wolf, okay, right, yeah. Wolf carried the kids back. <laughs> Um, I don't okay, so then, right after that, though, he returns, and he fucking, he just, like, body slams Goliath. Like, we're just back to the fight now. Um, he tries to get him into a chokehold. Dingo throws a, like, a flash grenade at Lex. Uh, so Lex is blinded. Dingo has so many yeah, gadgets yeah, in this episode. Yeah, Wolf, Wolf puts Goliath in a chokehold, imme- like, all of a sudden after ramming him. And he's mm-hmm. just like, take that, beast. And it's mm-hmm. just like, this is something you know he'd been wanting to do since he yeah, saw his Yeah, he's probably been jerking off thinking about this. And then I put in my notes. So these dumbass kids are like, we gotta help the pack and start throwing trash at Lex and Goliath. And then I put, leave my babies alone, you little They're shits. So, but yeah, in, in my notes, I just said these fucking kids. And that's all I said <laughs> for this part. But yeah, they're throwing like Lex. soda cans and pieces of, pieces of garbage at Lex. And Lex like freaks out. He screams, stop it! Um, and the kids run away crying. <laughs> Which, happy pride, everyone! <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's 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 good. I like that. <laughs> so okay, so the family just like leaves. They're like, okay, this is too much for us. And the dad, I love how the dad is just constantly trying to theorize what the fuck is going on. He's just like, at first, he's just like, they're 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 filming a movie or something. Uh-huh. And then as they're leaving, he's just like, it's probably just a publicity stunt. Yeah, but the mom is like, it looks pretty real to me, which uh. Which foreshadows her descent into a KKK member. It does Wolverine. not foreshadow her turning into a fucking quarry, it, man. Just because her kid saw some gargoyles in an alley once. Anyway, as I was saying, it's perfectly <laughs> foreshadowed. Um, oh my god. So, okay, Fox is like, Now, while the street's deserted, finish them quickly. Which I thought was also very funny. Because, like, you're in New York City. The street is never <laughs> deserted. Like, what are you talking uh-huh. about? Oh, is it even a street or an alley? It looks like an alley. No, it's a fucking street. Like, you can see lights uh, on in some of the windows around them. Like, there's people there. What the fuck? <laughs> so, um, let's see. I'm looking, I'm looking at the thing. Hold on. 
Um, so, um, Goliath and Wolf... The whole, the whole time she's saying this, though, Goliath and Wolf are kind of duking it out in the background. Yeah, they're just fighting the background. Uh, the Wolf's just like, so, you, you single? You got a, you oh got a, a Mr. Gargoyle monster in the picture? As he's punching the shit uh, out of him, because that's just how he flirts. You've, you've passed, mask- you've he, passed my masculinity Wolf, test. You're just masculine Wolf enough for me to is, want to fuck. He's the epitome of that toxic mask for mask guy you find on Grindr. I know. I mean, that's why he wants it, to bring Goliath down so bad, because it gives like him a thrill that he was able to get the better of another man. Honestly, like, that's all though. he cares about. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So okay, Goliath gets anyone. knocked down by Wolf, uh, and then Jack and Lahaina rush in to like fucking like finish him. But then Goliath rips open a fire hydrant, and how does he know how fire I hydrants was work? Going to ask that too. Like, how does he know this? Did he see it on TV? Oh my! Like, does oh he watch God. TV? I don't know. I don't think he does. The others all. Do. I'm gonna have to send you. I'm gonna have to send you like the PDF file of my notes later because <laughs> I think we both took a lot of similar stuff. Probably. Uh, but yeah, yes. he knows that fire hydrants have water in it, so he blasts them all with water. Um, then he climbs up another fire escape to get away. Uh, Dingo throws an exploding boomerang to like stop them, but it doesn't work. He, this he's time. just pulling them out of his ass. He where literally is, he is um, which I enjoy. That is where he keeps his weapons. That's why his ass is so tight, because it's gotta be to store all of his goodies. You know? Right! You know? Okay, I just gotta say this in post, but, Croup, I don't think that's how asses work. Um, yeah. But they get to the top of the roof, uh, you know, unscathed for the most part. The rest of the pack, like, unzip these fucking grappling hooks, and they just start following them up the building. <laughs> they, they just become mountain climbers all of a it's sudden. Amazing. And they just start grappling grappling up the building, because the fire escape is just fucking blown up. But then we see Dingo coming up from the ladder next thing. Yeah, he's first. Oh yeah, that's right, he is climbing the ladder all of a sudden. He probably went off his rope onto a ladder, it's not important, I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs> Um, but he, because he freaks out when he gets to the top, he does, he sees a fucking gargoyle, and he whips out his gun and, like, blows its head off. Um. And it's, like, just a legit gargoyle statue. Yes, it's an actual, like, statue of a gargoyle. Um, they're on, like, the one roof in New York City that's covered in gargoyles for some reason, because there's statues everywhere up here. Um, so it's the perfect place for Goliath and Lexington to, like, hide themselves. Fox, is, Fox even gives like a little Elisa-ish comment. She's like needle in a haystack. Uh huh. I feel like the and two of them would get along if they like spent time together. Don't they meet at some point? They have to, but like I could see them being like girlfriends, like you know, like oh. girlfriends. So it's like a four-way thing with like Elisa and Goliath, <laughs> and then uh, Xanatos and Fox. I, I, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a double date swingers party. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. That's that's an image Except... in my head now. That. <laughs> <laughs> and Owen's just kind of there watching the whole thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, okay. So the pack they all start like sniffing around for the real gargoyles who are up here. <laughs> sniffing around. Yeah, because they're the pack and they're furries. Yeah. The dynamic interestingly changes here as the hunters become the. Hunters. I literally wrote that down right here. Yes. Oh, this is why we're bros. Cause, okay, yeah, because Goliath starts, like, taking them out one by one. Like, you see, like, a shadow shift, and it's him, and it's like, oh, like, he's being sneaky now. Um, yeah, and as they're walking through, Jackal notices uh, Hyena, his sister, is missing. Mm-hmm. And then all they see next is just her glove falling on the okay, ground. Okay, when I first saw that, though, I thought that Goliath had literally ripped her arm off. But then I remembered oh. that, like, oh, wait, she's not a cyborg yet. That was just, like, a glove she was wearing. So- yeah, no, um, <laughs> what I wrote down here was she's just, like, gone, I guess. That or she turned into a glove. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fox tells the group to stay together, and they all just kind of huddle their butts together in group formation. Yeah, like, like, Dindo and back. Fox definitely, like, press their asses together as this is happening. Like, I remember seeing just that. Just like old times. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> and it's funny because as soon as she says this, like a second later, Dingo just kind of like drifts off just a little, and then he's just carried away by Lexington. We don't see him again the rest yeah, of the episode. Yeah, he just like, bye Dingo, like, I guess you're <laughs> gone now. <laughs> I wrote down bye Felicia in my oh notes. Oh my god. Uh, Jackal, like, and decides that enough is enough because he sees the writing on the wall. He's freaking out and, like, right He now. runs away. 
Uh, Fox and, and Wolf are like, like no, we can take idiot. them. And then he's just like, this wasn't in my contract. And he runs off like the sissy rich boy he is because he's Draco Malfoy in my head now. <laughs> and then he mullet. gets got by Goliath. It looks like Goliath then, just fucking eats him. Like, you just see the shadows on the wall of Goliath, like, So, appearing. it's, like, it's interesting, because we know they're not dead, but, like, what the fuck did they do to them? I, you know, they're probably just knocking them unconscious, or maybe they're fucking them to unconsciousness. We don't know. It could be anything. I mean, there's a number of possibilities. So, it's just Wolf and Fox left yep, that we're dealing with. like in Star with. Fox. And, yeah, no, the lesbian, gay, solidarity team up. Uh... So, Goliath has been a fucking boss this whole episode. <laughs> um, he burst through he a wall. Bust, so, he bust through, like, five walls already. Yeah, this like, okay, something. he's like the fucking Kool-Aid man. He bursts through a wall, <laughs> he grabs the two of them, and then he slams them through a wall. Like, literally just through a brick wall. Um, then they fall down, like, into a building where there's a photo shoot happening. There's, like, a guy taking ca- pictures of swimsuit models just hanging out on a beach backdrop. Yeah, it's a bikini babe and party. A bikini babe. I don't know. It's really, it's a very jarring change of, like, <laughs> setting. Because we go from, like, stalkers on the roof hunting time to, oh, it's, it's a lovely day at the beach and <laughs> swimsuit models all of a sudden. <laughs> So, okay, so, like, so, they all sort of scream, just, like, four people just, or three people just fell, like, into the middle of their set. Um, one of the bikini babes, like, goes to run off, but Fox, like, grabs her and makes her into a hostage. And holds a gun up to her head. Yeah, I think this probably made me realize as a kid that Fox was, like, definitely some sort of bisexual, just because, like, this scene was sort of hot, with her holding this, like, bikini woman hostage. I don't know. Yeah, and she she knows how to handle uh, women, but it's yeah. interesting because they don't really do anything with the hostage except just kind of walk backwards out the building as Goliath. Yeah, like Fox them. doesn't even hold the gun up to this hostage. She's pointing the gun at Goliath, who is just sort of like following them, and like Wolf is in the background, like he's not really doing very much. We did get a nice he's shot just of his like butt following, though, as he was getting to. He's his following. Feet. Yeah, yeah. He's just following Fox's lead. And the photographer guy is, like, taking pictures of all this. Yes. Which, I guess, comes up again later. Yeah, and, like, you assume he's taking pictures of, like, the giant purple, like, muscular, winged monster in the studio. Um, but apparently he isn't. But we'll get into that at the end when they bring it up in the show. So, Wolf and Fox back their way outside with the hostage, and Goliath follows. And as soon as, like, Fox passes the model off to Wolf, Lexington does this surprisingly really scary shout and just tackles Fox, and I guess that just knocks her out. Yeah, that insane gargoyle scream that they all have. And yeah, like, like Fox I is would just fucking, knocked I would afterward. fucking... I would faint after I heard that shit. So, it's pretty intense. Goliath just... And then Wolf... Yes. Wolf doesn't, he doesn't do anything with the model. He just, he's just like, what is this? And he just lets her go. <laughs> In my notes, I said Wolf let the hostage go because he doesn't care about women. That's all that <laughs> I said. Like, he just doesn't acknowledge that they're even, like, a thing. <laughs> he's just like, what? No, like, I literally put in my notes, um, Wolf lets the model go and runs after the monster or Scargoyle. Yes, because he has his priorities straight. Yes, yes. Um, and he, he's just, he's just handed like a scantily clothed woman. He's just like, "What is this? Get out of I know, here!" Yeah, like, he doesn't he's recognize done... it. Like, what? I don't. I don't recognize what this <laughs> he's is. He's like the fucking Terminator. He scans people <laughs> and sees, and determines their masculinity. Yeah, like all he stands is like dick models. outline, and like that's all that he has. So he's like, does he like do not detect? Like, <laughs> disengage. <laughs> so, um, he runs after Lexington. And then he, like, picks him up in this really tight bear hug formation. I, I did not remember like, this part of the episode when I watched it I didn't it either. Then. But, like, yeah, like, he just, like, wraps very his quick. arms around Lex. And Lex is, like, really, really, like, squirmy. And, like, nah, uh, uh, But Wolf is just, like, hugging him really tight against his body. Like, both arms. And I don't know. Like, ooh, God, I, I had to fan myself a little bit. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> I was waiting for it to happen, and it's happening now. Um, I get really sweaty uh, when I when I think about guys I like. In case the listeners aren't aware, um. uh, I actually um I don't know if I talked about this earlier. I probably did, 
but I sweat through two pairs of shirts last night taking oh all these God. notes down and watching the episode. Uh, like it's true, he sent me the video of it for some reason. I'm just I his, his sweaty shirts. I took it off and laid it down on the bed. I'm like, oh my god, I can see the pit stains. I'm so out of composure. Uh, but Goliath is also out of composure because he gets outraged because only he's allowed to hug Lexington close like that. So And it's funny because you can tell Wolf just did that as a tactic to get Goliath's goat because... He just immediately tosses Lexington to the side. Yeah, he and just like by Felicia again. And then he does like a come at me, bro, to Goliath. He, he says, finally, some real action real in this super action. gritty voice. Like, this is what he's been waiting for his whole life. He wants to fight some super fucking mo- muscular mm-hmm. monster, some, man. Some muscular big dick monster. Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's hereditary. <laughs> and then Goliath just fucking decimates him. Like, um, he, okay, no, I, no, 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 you can't just say it like I that. I figured, stuff okay, that you can describe There's this stuff fight. that happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll okay. allow you to please. Okay, cue the action music. <laughs> duh, duh, duh. He grins and just attempts to body slam Goliath into a nearby wall, which Goliath stops by grinding his foot talons into the pavement. He puts Wolf into a suplex grapple, and Wolf kind of grunts out as he's being grabbed. His head is just kind of a little close to Goliath's armpit for a oh second there, and he can probably get a good sense of, like, just that gargoyle musk. <laughs> and it's here <laughs> where people usually fall under the spell of just wanting to desperately fuck Goliath. But Wolf here is just affected, like, horribly, because he becomes obsessive with this man for the rest of the fucking show. Yeah, like, years um, afterwards, he's still sexually obsessed over Goliath. And so, Goliath, in the end, just picks, picks up Wolf, has him in midway through a backflip flip formation, but just tosses him away, and Wolf lands it with a somersault, his timber ponytail just flowing <laughs> in the breeze as he turns around and tries to go back in for more. And we get a shot of muscled Goliath approaching Wolf, and Wolf, surprised at first, begins to clench his own fists and, and muscles and prepares to go in for a punch, almost like, no, I have to prove I'm the more bigger man, I'm the alpha. <laughs> and then he goes in to use all his strength to punch Goliath, and Goliath just catches the fist, no problem. This and part was hot. Wolf, I remember this part. Yeah. Wolf looks horrified. He's like, nope, this has never happened to me before. He's just like, for the first time, control is like being taken away from him by a bigger man, and he's just like super scare roused, <laughs> like scared and horny. Yeah, I think and I think Goliath's the difference just... between like this fight and like every other fight Wolf's been in is that Goliath beats him through, like, sheer brute force, which is, like, what Wolf is supposed to be good at. Like, that's his thing. Mm-hmm. So being, like, actually yes. out-muscled is just something that he can't wrap his head around at all. Oh, God. No, not at all. So that, that of course, sets him off. Um, and then after he his fist gets caught, Goliath punches him into a nearby stack of trash cans. Where he and belongs. When, when a character's... P- when a character is punched into trash cans in this show, it means they're unconscious. Yes. Um, Do you think, like, trash in the Dark Rollers universe has, like, a, like an effect on people that it knocks them out? Probably. Yeah, that seems like a different um, canon. Yeah, but, like, Wolf grunts upon impact before, like, falling slack unconscious and groaning and stuff. And then we hear police sirens approaching nearby. Mm-hmm. So... Lex and Goliath both decide they need to get the fuck out of there, leaving Wolf and Fox unconscious in the alleyway to be arrested. I just dropped a quarter. I don't know if you heard that. I didn't. Um, okay, it's probably going to show up in the recording, though. Good. I like to... Listen to the I, quarter, I, I can't, everyone. It's, you might hear it sometimes, but I can't not do things with my hands as I'm, like, trying to focus on stuff. Yeah, yeah, so I'm always, like, playing with stuff around me. Like, I have nail clippers and quarters and stuff. But, right, so, so the two of them just skedaddle out of there. Um, um, and I, I think, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that's the last we see of, like... Um, is it the last we see of Wolf for the first season? I think it is. Uh, I don't... You're the Wolf expert. I feel like you know the answer to this. Because the next time we see Wolf is in season two when he's in jail. I know we see Fox again, and we see the twins again. Yeah, I don't think we see Wolf or Dingdo for the rest of this season. Yeah, they're both, like, just off in jail. They're off having gay sex with each other for the rest of this season. I There's some kind of hidden story going on yeah. behind the scenes. 
like Dingo's tight so, butt, Wolf's big dick. It's a it's a match made in mm. in somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Lex feels like super guilty. Um, yeah, they're back. They're at back the at the castle. As yeah. Uh, Jaliv consoles him though to see saying that actually Lex was right. Like the gar- the gargoyles can't hide forever. Um, whether they yeah, like it or not, reminds... they are a part of the world. They do need allies, mm-hmm. and sometimes that does mean taking chances, which they he, they did here. He reminds Lexington that because of who they are, they have to be cautious about trusting strangers, which again hones into the episode's meaning and such, but he reassures him, though, by, you know, when he says he's right, and when he was referring to searching for allies and finding ways to live in this world while, rather than to hide from it, um, sometimes they have to take chances like they did tonight. Just hopefully with different results. Yes, I think it's a nice like and th- it's a good queer message to give kids. Like even mm-hmm. if, even if like you are betrayed or you do get heartbroken or whatever, like you shouldn't yes. shut yourself off from the world. Like you should still remain open to new people who won't treat you that way. And I think it was um, nice. yeah, absolutely. Goliath adds to do otherwise is to remain forever alone. It's so dramatic. Um, yeah, it would be more dramatic if Forever Alone didn't become an, such a beaten-to-death meme in the 2000s. Oh, I didn't even know that. Uh, Let's just have a really sweet it, line here. He says, it's nice to know there are still some heroes left. Referring to Goliath. Which is, like, oh! so cute. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. He looks up to his dad. He does. Um, so then the other gargoyles um, all, like, show up. And they're super excited because yeah. apparently the pack's been arrested well, off camera. Whatever the hell they were doing yeah, this whole time um, is anyone's That guess. photographer guy who we thought was taking pictures of Goliath, like I would have been at least, apparently he was only taking pictures of Fox taking that, that bikini woman hostage. And that, that got them nowhere. Like, there was no need for her to take that woman hostage. She just saw her chance. Yeah, like, okay, the lesson, the real lesson of this episode is if you're going to take a woman hostage, like, you have to use that, that hostage to your advantage. You don't just hold the person and then not do anything with it. That's a waste. Maybe they, she was going to do something, uh, but Lexington did kind of knock her out afterwards. He did. He was fierce. He was. Um, but yeah, so yeah, um, so the 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 villains are put in jail again. Another one nicely wrapped up by the Manhattan plan. And then And Hudson Hudson also chimes in about the whole endeavor and the pack being arrested and he's saying that he thought they were the good guys. Maybe we shouldn't believe everything we see on television. Mm-hmm. A nice little toad. It's nice that he's uh he's <laughs> learned the word for television now and doesn't just call it a picture box. <laughs> Look, they're all gay. <laughs> they don't know what things are. <laughs> so it seems like the episode is is over. Like everything's fine. Uh, but then there's one last scene. Uh huh. I hate uh-huh. this scene. It's so stupid. I feel like we already talked about it. Like without talking. <laughs> we about did. It. We were before we recorded. <laughs> but like, our, no, maybe we did. But like, Owen is like visiting Xanatos in prison, and he uses more big boy words. Which he is makes boy. me mad, but he's like everything it was done as he stipulated. Okay, stipulated isn't a big stipulated. Boy. That's a normal word. <laughs> I've never fucking used that word in my life. Well, you're not Owen Burnett, who is a fabulous I'm, fellow. I, I guess I'm not. I'm just not fab like Owen <laughs> is. Um, so he explains that the whole this whole episode was set up that he had uh, under Xenatos' instructions had made it so the TV in the castle would only <laughs> show episodes of the pack. And then he's also the one who sent Goliath's nudes to Fox for her to show the rest of the pack, um, who then reacted exactly as predicted. Thank you, Mr. Exposition. Oh, but it You're is, welcome. It is... No, not you. Freaking Owen. Oh. <laughs> um, it is revealed, though, that Xanatos... Uh, created the pack TV show because he yeah. wanted to see how good they were. Okay, but he created the show like secretly, like he's kept that knowledge from them for some reason. Like I honestly, honest to God, completely forgot that the pack was like Zan- David Zanatos's TV show until I realized. Yeah, it's this like episode. this little pet project. <laughs> I just think this is really funny because yeah, like part of Zanatos's reasons for like mainly putting the gargoyles and the pack into conflict with each other was, like, to test the pack's capabilities and also the gargoyle's capabilities. But, like... 
And then he says he it was w- most informative, and then he does a yeah, little Yeah, okay, smirk. but he already has, like, a hit TV show oh that, God. like, sells out Madison Square Gardens, like, <laughs> regularly. What else do you need? Like, oh why do you God. need a mercenary death squad on top of that? <laughs> like, Xanatos. Oh my god. It's just like the writers are just like desperately trying to find ways to make <laughs> Xanatos more plot important, so they just say he owns everything. Like, I think this is Xanatos just like being full of shit again. Because he's all just like, yeah, I say the test was most. Well, why is he telling this to Owen? Like... <laughs> he just wants Owen to think he's He cool. doesn't give a shit what Owen thinks. He knows Owen is his bitch. He does. Um, but yes, that's the episode, uh, Oh my god. (laughs) The pack. Oh, yeah, oh my god is right. This was, there was so much in this episode. Oh my god, there was so much in this episode. It was definitely the horniest episode by far. Um, definitely the horniest episode by far. Definitely the most action-packed. And the gayest. It was, it had it all. Yeah, I, I would give this episode a 5 out of 5. I'm giving this a, a strong 5 out of 5. Uh-huh, maybe even a 6 out of 5. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a favorite of mine <laughs> for many reasons, most of which having to do with Wolf and my yeah, constant... Yeah, I think you might have mentioned that a few times. My constant thirst for this character, who is just a huge fucking dumbass. Ridiculous. Just, wears, just a douche bro. Wears stupid clothes and has stupid mindset morals about other guys and the, the alpha male mindset. Ooh, I want him to fucking... I want to drink uh-huh. his dirty bath water. Like, he's the kind of guy who I hate in real life, but who I love, like, humiliating situations to befall. Yes, yes, Like, yes. I love to see him taking but, down a peg. Or like that like him, recent I mean. art I had commissioned by Dragon underscore Aces. Oh my gosh, you got art? I got art. Um, <sighs> A couple episodes ago, you had painted a scenario, like at the very last like 10 seconds of that episode, you were like talking about like, oh, what if Wolf and Hudson like wrestled in singlets? And that, that just didn't leave my mind. That ate away at me. <laughs> And That's I really to... funny because okay, you said that on Twitter when you posted this artwork. But I can't even remember saying that to you. Like, I, I'm sure I that I did, but I just, I don't I remember it. <laughs> just to make sure, and you definitely did. Um, I do have a huge thing for wrestling, um, the domination aspects. Uh, and singlets are also a bonus. And Dragon Aces did a very nice, uh, lovely job of, uh, you know, putting a singlet on a gargoyle. Like, it just, like, reaches down to his back. There's just an open arch for his wings and everything else and his tail it yeah i i I think my favorite part of the piece is just the the design of the singlet he did oh yeah it does seem like hudson to like realistically wear that and Mm -hmm. there's to be room for his wings and his tail and everything like it looks really good plus it looks really hot on his ass yeah (laughs) yeah and for context the full image is uh um hudson sitting on wolf's face while wearing a singlet Yes, and Wolf looking very angry about we it. We don't see his face, but it's very red of what we do see. Um, like, you can you can see enough to. And there's pick also up what he's a feeling. little, a little, um, little cute little doodle near his crotch region where there's like a little eggplant drawing, smiling like he's definitely got a uh-huh. boner. Yeah, I, he's I, angry I, that he has a boner. He's like, God mm-hmm. damn, other men shouldn't be giving me a boner. I should only get boners when I fuck them. God, he's just. I feel like he's in a love-hate relationship with just being dominated constantly. I mean, it happens to him throughout the entire show. I don't think he wins yes. a single fight. Like, I agree completely with that. So, I'm I just... don't know if there's even a point in asking you, but who do you think is the gayest character in this episode? Hello? Hi. Hi. Did I cut you... out? No, you didn't. I heard you perfectly. Oh. I'm just being silent. Oh, okay. Because you know. You know. You know I mean, who the gayest character in this maybe episode Maybe I want you to say it out loud. The is gayest it? character in this episode <laughs> is none other than... Jackal? 
God fucking no god fucking goddamn Draco Malfoy ass British ass fucking thinks he's like British, but he's actually fucking New Yorkian ass jackal with his weird incest sister who's like constantly laughing around. No, I'm talking about Wolf. He is the oh. gayest of the Not pack. uh not Owen, not Lex. Owen's in this episode for like uh, not even a minute. Lexington actually is a strong contender. I was actually thinking. I, that. I feel like if it, if it weren't Wolf, which I knew you would say, it would have to be Lexington because like this is like a, a very a key huge. character moment for him, mm -hmm. and uh, and like the whole a lot of the episode I feel like is sort of like queer subtext with the oh absolutely. Out story. I was actually thinking about pulling like a double whammy, um, and just saying that I thought Lex was the gayest character instead, but then I just thought about it again. I'm just like, no, it's definitely Wolf. <laughs> He's imagine being able to out gay like the the gayest character in the show. That's a skill that only Wolf possesses. Yes. Well, I wouldn't say Lexington is per se the gayest character. I would just say he's the he's one the most prominent gay character. Yes, 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 yes. But um, no. Uh, I just think Wolf's whole hyper masculine mindset. Um, is really just introduced in this episode. Um, and Lexington even has, like, this weird one-off little um, scene with, like, Fox flirting with him, which I don't think he, like, really reciprocates or anything like that. But um, I think I think he's not used to, like, receiving that sort of attention. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I think that was yeah. a, a good majority of it. Um, like, you know, he's never ha just had someone walk up and, like, touch his face and just, like, whisper mm -hmm. sensually to him and shit. Um, yeah, like, you know, he and Broadway and Brooklyn, like, they 69 each other, but they've never, the like, stroked his face lovingly. Like and that, then you have said. Wolf, who literally throws a model to the side so he can go and <laughs> fuck around with Goliath. You can't top that. You can't top that level of gay. Like, Wolf is probably thinks in his mind that he looks like the straightest guy in the bunch. Which is funny, because he's, he's not. Because <laughs> he's obsessed with manliness, but like, he's obsessed with manliness just in really homoerotic ways. That's, he's Mac from Always Sunny. Yeah, I can, like, I can understand that. Um, yeah, no, Wolf, there is no universe you can convince me Wolf is heterosexual. I'm just sorry. Yeah, I'm just so far immersed into my mindset that there's, people can show me like, like I've seen fan art of like of like just Wolf with like I think like someone's OC or something, someone's female OC, like the mutated Wolf, and I'm just like, no, that's he's it's just weird. This is this is because you can't imagine him that way. Like I like just the thought of just like Wolf kissing like a female on the mouth is just weird to me. <laughs> I, um, I do feel like he does have a lot of internalized homophobia. I feel like, and, yeah, see, that is something I put like, in my notes. Like, maybe he wouldn't admit that he is gay, but, like, he is. <laughs> I put in my notes that as I watch this show, I want to kind of reassess Wolf and kind of determine whether he's a closet case or not. Like, is he aware of how gay he is? Does he, like, 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 does he know no, or is he just that dumb? <laughs> D like, does Fox? Fox knows. Like Fox, Fox, knows. Fox probably knows. That's like the only reason she hasn't made a move on him. Just she realizes it, and he doesn't. That would be really funny to me. If like years later he's like, so I know you slept with everyone else, but how come you never tried with me? And she'd be like, honey, you're gay. And like that's the first <laughs> time he'd be like, what? Like oh he my finally God. realized it because she said it. <laughs> Or, like, the whole group is together and they all find out they all slept with Fox. And they're like, Wolf, yes. what, what, what was it like with you and Fox? And he's just like, oh, it was, it was, it was really, really intense. She said I was the biggest she ever had. Oh, my and God. And Fox just walks in and just like, honey, you're gay. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I just love shit like that. This is a beautiful scene that we've, we've put together now. Yes. Oh, God. Oh There's so God. much. So much. Um, also a big part of why I love Wolf as a character, because I can just constantly theorize all the, all the possible, you know, scenarios of him mm -hmm. coming to terms with his own sexuality and humorous, dumb, meathead ways. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Um, okay. So, so what's the next topic? The horniest moment in the yeah. In the this horniest episode? moment. Um, I you have a couple to... contenders. I, I have I, multiple. I yeah. We both do. Okay. I'll do mine first. Um, I feel like when Goliath first woke up, there was a really good flexing scene with him. Yes. Yes. Um, and there was good. another really good flexing scene where he like punched through the uh, the trash compactor where, where he looked super ripped. Yes. Um, Goliath looked really good this whole episode. He did. He, his boogles looked mighty um, supple, I might say. Um, like, just looking through my screenshots that I took, I, there's like at least five moments where Goliath just flexed for no reason. He looked really good in all of them. Um, a lot of good dingo moments. Yes. Um, Named some. Let's see. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Yes, I want to specify the moments. <laughs> I mean, we see him. He okay, the part where he punches his abs for yeah. no reason. <laughs> and he's called. I love that when muscular dudes. But just, it's like, like a close up on like, his oh. body, though. Like, yeah, but it's like muscular dudes are just like, oh, I'm getting so flabby and like out of shape, and it's just like they're just perfectly muscled. I know it's like a totally solid midsection. Um. Like, he was throwing boomerangs a lot, and, like, every time he did that, he sort of, like, twisted his body, so you got a shot of his butt. Like, I there guess. was stuff like that. He's just a, he's got, an attractive man. There were a lot of really good shots of Wolf's butt in this episode. Uh-huh. Like, I'm pretty... Like, like I said, if the show just had a bigger budget, it would be, like, we would have, like, Venom ass levels of <laughs> man ass. From the 90s Spider-Man yes, show? Yes, 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 yes. It would be like that, I would believe. I don't know, but yeah, Wolf and Dingo, um, I want them, I, you know, I've said this a lot of times before, um, with many scenarios when it comes to two guys with really great asses, but I want them to just kind of like crush my head and grind oh them God. to dust between their butts. I, I feel like Wolf might refuse, but Dingo would be like, hey, if you pay, then I'll do whatever you want. And eventually he might be able to convince Wolf into doing that, too. He'd be like, no, mate. No, it's he real, would... It's real manly second, to do it. <laughs> the second Dingo offers, he's just like, I can do it better. Yeah, I, I can crush I can crush walnut, walnuts with these cheats. I'll oh my, show you. I'll show so, you all. This is so fucking hot right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, you have no idea what this is doing to me. Because I feel like Wolf oh would actually... God flex his ass thinking that was such a straight thing to show people yeah like yeah this is what straight guys do oh my god <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> what is wrong with me listeners so in the past um if i want to make sid like a fictional character all i need to do is just is like com compare, compare that character to, to wolf. wolf in various ways <laughs> like that's all it takes and oh, like I, I know I, I got you on a saber tooth only by telling you that Sabretooth and Wolf are a lot of life in terms of personality. And then you showed me those clips where he's, like, fighting Wolverine and pouncing on him, and then he gets knocked out. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, he's making me feel funny. Uh-huh, and, and now I you're, like, up... full-on obsessed with Sabretooth, I was too. obsessed with Sabretooth for a hot, like, couple months last fall. Like, he was all I tweeted about for a, a while. And it's like, I haven't even... I'm, I'm not even, like, that much of an X-Men fanatic as much as, like, uh, Krupier is, I just, I, I, I don't know. It just, I'm But you just, do like Sabretooth. I do like Sabretooth <laughs> a lot. Um, I, not, not as much as Wolf, though. And, like, no one's ever just gonna outrank Wolf for me. He, I don't know why I'm so obsessed and fixative on this character. It's like, you think after, like, almost a decade of simping for him now i would get tired of him and move on to someone else and just use him as like an old memory but no every couple months i come around i make some weird ass wolf thirst tweet and i'm just like guys then the if, rest like, of us have to roll our eyes we're like oh he's gonna be stuck on wolf for another couple I months am. Now. like i don't know what's wrong with me i think i need a therapist or something you you and i first met when you ran a tumblr that just had lots of gifs of wolf and other like cartoon characters when, when croup and i first met i had like wolf as my icon at all platforms um and Whenever we were talking, I remember um, 
when I first proposed, like, I was getting my Sona for the first time, uh, you told me that it was going to be hard to not see me as Wolf once I got <laughs> it, which is, that was so long ago, but, like, man, there was Aww. just an era. There was an era where I just, ugh. And that you era is... Wolf. I can Wolf to a really weird extent. Whatever the fuck can means. <laughs> Look, I just okay. I, I, so I like I like trashy guys. Yeah, I mean, same. <laughs> but okay, so there's been there's been a multitude of hot moments. In this, yeah, this, we this forgot. Is probably the hottest episode of all. But okay, but what is the hottest moment of all in this episode? We have to pick just one. Oh God, I actually can't decide. Um, there's several. Obviously, mine's gonna be wolf related. Um, mm, obviously. There's him lifting weights and getting all sweaty at the beginning and getting angry for no reason. That was horny. Um, there's him, all the shots of his butt, and his groin! Oh my god! Like, I can feel a lump in my throat every time his bulge is on screen. Oh my god. I, I, I'm not healthy. Like, I'm, I'm a sick weirdo. But... Okay, can I put forward a suggestion? Oh no. Okay, well, no, it's, it's just about the episode. My horniest moment, I feel like, is when Wolf grabbed Lexington and was, like, squeezing him. That was and a pretty good was all moment. stormy. Because Wolf was... really had this look on his face, too, as he was doing it. And then he, like, he looks directly at the camera. He does. Or, like, maybe maybe he's supposed he's to be looking at, at Goliath. He's looking like, at Goliath. Like, near Goliath there. But, like, it's sort of... It, it, I mean, I'm not Wolf's biggest fan like you are, but it made me feel things, too. It looked like a very, you know, interesting, like, cover to, like, some BDSM porn video <laughs> of, like, you know, like, Bear Ruins Twink or something like that. Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> that's gonna be, that's gonna be the thumbnail for this episode, you know. Like, that is... <laughs> Like, that's a good shot. I'm looking at the screen tap, and, like, it's all I can see now. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Because he's looking right at the camera, and Wolf does kind of look like, you know, a lot of those default, like, um, you know, oh, hot stepfather ruins stepson's no. pole, or something oh like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. But, okay, so that's that's my <laughs> vote for Hottest Moment, is that part. Okay, um... Uh, oh god, I don't know. But like that... this episode, okay, this episode had Goliath, Dingo, and Wolf in it. All this of them so were looking hot. hot. Like every fucking shot they're in. This is like other episodes. We've been like there was nothing hot that even happened here. But this episode, there's like the Too whole much. thing was hot. We're we're so <laughs> indecisive right now about what was the hottest <laughs> moment. Um, I the think... show gave us too much hotness. I really like the scene um, where he's lifting weights. I really like the scene where he's fighting Goliath and gets knocked out. You know, I might go for that, honestly, where he just what, tries getting to... knocked out in the trash. No, like just like the whole power dynamic when he tries to punch Goliath and Goliath acts like he's a little bitch and just catches his fist. Oh, and catches and looks his fist. Horrified. Yeah, like I thought I that was that pretty. Too. I thought that was pretty corny. Um, but, like, mm. horniest animators, I feel like if you're animating a dude lifting weights and sweating, that's pretty horny. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I'm... I feel like that, too. Okay, so we have we have many, many moments. Listeners, you should send in what you thought the real horny moment was and, uh, and tell us how we're dumbasses that we didn't list it where we should have. Um, I guess for me it'd have to be a tie between the fight with Goliath and Wolf and Wolf lifting weights. <laughs> I could easily nice. jerk off to both those scenes. No oh problem. My God. Well, you can do it after we're done recording. No, I'm gonna do it right now. You can't stop. Me. No. <laughs> I did it. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um okay. okay. We have we have we have multiple emails to read, guys. I'm <laughs> so happy we're getting emails. We are. Um, yes. No. Okay. We, we let did. me let me do Remy's first. Um. Okay. So he he's. Um, Rembrandt uh, sent us that first email listing all those many gargoyle factoids mm -hmm. that we went over last episode. Mm -hmm. um, so yes. he, he writes in a den. He says, Hey there, yes. Sid Manitor, and Manitorn. Thanks for another fantastic episode of the Loincloth Hour. I'm currently suffering the heavy blow of side effects from the second dose of the vaccine. Oh, no. Just totally got wrecked by them. So your podcast was a very bright spot on my Saturday evening. 
and made me smile. Oh, well, your email right now is making me smile. Um, <laughs> he says, I love your takes on everything in the episode, from the action to the humor to the dramatic moments, and yup, even the horny bits. To which I agree, the Hudson parts were definitely the horniest of this last episode. Yes. I'm personally very partial to Hudson myself. He's a big favorite. So mm-hmm. I enjoy the attention and praise you guys heap on him. And of course, the part about my, my previous email has me absolute, blah, absolutely giddy. I loved your reactions. <laughs> um, to answer your question as to where I got all that juicy info, um, I previously went over all this earlier in this episode, but I'll just read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it happened at a convention, specifically at Convergence 2014, where Greg Weissman held a special After Dark panel for adults only, where he'd answer questions by those attending. Questions that, of course, he couldn't answer during a normal panel. Um, mm. Parts of those revelations, such as Fox's confirmed bisexuality, have been properly posted in the official Gargoyles wiki. Um, I don't know if this is the same one you guys are use or not, but if not, you should switch to this one. Um, he lists it. It's Dark Wiki, uh, yes. which I do use. That is my preferred wiki as well. So thank I you, just, Remy. I usually look at whatever comes up in the search results, but I do like the Guard Wiki better. Um, he does say it's it's a great and very informative wiki with lots of stuff the show has revealed, um, and even a full on timeline of events down to like specific dates. Yes. Um, yes. Which yes, that that wiki is it's very helpful. I, I usually look up the episode we're covering in that wiki like before we record. Um, that's where I got some of the info, like where uh, like those two fucking kids and their parents, like where where they also appear. Because oh I knew I gosh. I knew they did appear other places. I just didn't remember like exactly where. <laughs> um, so yes, um, that's all for now. Uh, blah, blah blah. Thank you again for a great episode. I'm very much looking forward to the next one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, Remy, because you are helping us make yes. this podcast even better than it was before. Yes. Uh, let the, uh, Brilliant. We we have three emails. So the next one is by uh, Hiron who yes. others might know as he's actually my boyfriend who I live with. So he sent mm-hmm. in a question. Um, he says, So now that we've gotten Wolf's actual introduction, I want to know, who would win in a fight, Hayton or Wolf? See, that's interesting. Um, I think I did see that email when we got it, and uh-huh. it left me wondering. That does kind of sort of happen in not really but they they do team like that's a spoiler i guess but there is an episode where they team up and try to fight goliath the whole episode they do that's way down the line that is like near the end of season two i mean the near the end of the show because there's no two of them fight each other in that episode too there's like a they, they, they don't get along but they don't like directly fight each other I feel like they don't get a launch because they're too similar to each other. They're there's, both fucking stupid. They are. Um, there's one point where Hakon <laughs> is just like, how you could be descended from me, I could never understand. Uh-huh. And, and like, Wolf is like, fuck off, old man. Yeah. Like, Probably. Th- that's literally what he's like. Um, Hakon <laughs> even possesses Wolf at one point and like wow. flexes in his body. So he like enters Wolf? Yeah. That's not the first time he's had a man inside him. <laughs> um, no, but who would win in a fight? See, Hakon is, um, he's a medieval Viking, and he's conquered, I guess, you know, like, small castles and villages, I, I suppose, in his history of being mm-hmm. a Viking. He was a leader of a whole Viking group. Wolf is just a really gay, flashy furry who's obsessed with <laughs> muscles and being the bigger man. However, oh his God. mutations his mutations do give him a slight advantage. Um, yeah, sub- see, this email didn't specify if this was, like, pre-mutate wolf or post-mutate. Or pre- Which, spoilers, or, people, wolf becomes a furry eventually. He does become a furry. <laughs> Or pre ghost take on or post ghost take on when he has powers and shit. Right. Okay. Well, let's let's say they're both living and they're just like normal humans. They're both alive. I mean, I feel like and they have like a wrestling match and they're just like in really tight singlets that show off their chest. You evil! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Okay, okay, uh, train of thought. So, um, 
if it just Hakon is a Viking and Wolf pre-mutate, I feel like Hakon would win because Wolf is just a really um, full of himself mercenary and Hakon actually hmm. has experience pillaging, I guess. Um, Do you feel like because Wolf is Hakon's descendant that Hakon would be moved to just like pin Wolf like across his knee and teach him like a real like good old-fashioned lesson on like who's really in charge? Like via spanking, I mean. Can you feed my spanking fetish and just say that that was what would happen? Um, I think <sighs> what's really beautiful like about just peel that... the singlet down and like apply some some hand to ass until Wolf has to cry uncle or or daddy as the taste may be. I mean, there is a lot um of contenders. If we're going for like human wolf being <laughs> spanked, um, you would definitely see his ass turn pink pretty fucking quickly. Just and there's a lot of guys who want to spank Wolf. There is, there is. Um, I, and yes, uh, Hakon, I could absolutely see throwing Wolf over his knee and giving, you know, his, his uh, rum, the rebellious... The man. Yes. Yes, his, his rebellious, fully grown man, child, descendant. Just <laughs> the spanking of a lifetime. Um, but, okay, so in terms of... Um, <laughs> mutate wolf and ghost Hakon. Um, I feel like mutate wolf would win. Well, well, okay, well, can ghost Hakon even do anything? Like he's a ghost. He possesses like an axe and fights Hudson, and then the axe gets like thrown into like a fucking like I forget like a trash compactor, and Hakon's ghost like fades away. Okay, does the axe like I don't really I don't even remember this episode. The very axe well. makes the, like does the wolf... axe like float around and like the, attack people? Like what does he do with the axe? Floats around at some points. Wolf is almost like he falls into like the ocean at one point from the docks, and the axe pulls Wolf out of the water and flies him away. <laughs> so it's like uh, it's like Thor's hammer. God he flies with it. <laughs> You know, I'm dreading coming to that episode, but I'm also, like, simultaneously, like, oh, that's, like, the only Wolf solo episode, though. Okay, well, the pace we've been going at, it'll be, like, years before we even get there. Yeah, that's there, true. So that's I'm true. not worried. Um, that's also Wolf's final appearance in the series. No! He's not in season three, which is another well, reason why I hate it. It won't be the final in our ongoing fanfiction, which we will write. Oh no, Wolf afterwards. is just gonna he's just gonna go on really gay <laughs> hijinks forever. He probably gets a career as like a gay porn star after the show. Like Dingo. Yeah, like Dingo sets him up. He's like, Oh, I know a studio. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's my so, cog. So, this is my um, terrible Australian accent. Yeah, no. So, um in the end I think he s I said who would win against who. Um Human Hakon would be Human Wolf, but <laughs> Mutate Hay Wolf would be um, Hakon pre Yeah, just all he has to do is just, like, put the axe, like, in the garbage or something. And he's like, I won. <laughs> Even before he's, like, a ghost. Like, if Hakon were just, like... Hakon were just a regular Viking. Um, okay. Wolf would... Mutate Wolf would beat him up. I imagine. Yeah, he'd be Because he, he has superhuman abilities. Yes. Nice. Okay, well, I, I hope that we answered your question to your satisfaction, <laughs> Hiron. And thank you for the email. And please, don't hesitate to email again. Uh, right. last question. Okay, this one I have not read, because we just got it, like, as we were recording. So, yeah. let's see. This is from Lucian again. Yes. Third email from him. He, yes. I believe he still, he still holds the record as the highest He's on a streak right now. To us. So, the subject of the email is Wolf's costume. Um, hmm. Body says, Heyo, you two. It's the Hudge Mage Lucian again. Thought of this one just earlier tonight. Seeing as Wolf is introduced in this episode, I have to ask, <laughs> do you think he has multiple copies of his costume just hanging out in a closet somewhere? Or just one that he wears whenever he's doing what he does? How stinky do you two think they are? Does he even wash them? <laughs> <laughs> no! No, I'm having an existential crisis! <laughs> oh my I feel God. like... <laughs> Oh my god, so, um, I don't think Wolf can look after himself. I feel like he would have to room with one of the pack members. And he makes something. them do his laundry? Yes, because he does not do his own laundry. 
like, uh, like I'm picturing him and Dingo as roommates right now. <gasps> and Dingo just has like picked up his fucking sweaty jock straps all the time. And he's just like, geez, Wolf, did he clean up after yourself once in a while? And Wolf's and like, whatever. I know you jerk off when you sniff it when I'm not around. Wolf's just like picking, like, <laughs> I can imagine Wolf just <laughs> off to the side, like, um, like lifting weights or something. He's got a toothpick in his mouth. He's just, he's just saying that. And he, oh god, what does Wolf wear around the house? He probably just wears underwear. I, I'm thinking just, like, briefs. I don't know why. That was the first thing I thought He's of. He's not a boxer's man. We learn this later. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, he probably does have, like, that that singlet he wears later, though, um, somewhere in his closet. I feel like that he just had that for the occasion. Yeah, I think he he, he definitely already had that. And then when yes. he became a furry, he was like, oh, well, let me just See, let me just wear this outfit I, I love already that, had. I know you hate it, but I love that singlet because it reminds me of the Madonna music video. Okay, it's not a singlet, though. It's like a leotard. Shush! And it's, it a looks thi- it's a thighless <laughs> singlet. It looks bad, though. Yeah, he Wolf is... Look, he, he can't even do his own laundry. You expect Wolf to come up with his own outfit designs on See, the spot? Look, he's got a what, giant, the, like, Wolf on his chest. Constantly. This is the real he's reason he had to join the pack, because he can't Wolf. dress he himself. He has a Wolf on his chest, and his real name is Rolf, which translates to Wolf. He's an idiot. <laughs> he's just obsessed with wolves, and he wants to be one. And he's then so he became furry. one later on. I'm, like, crying right now for some reason, because oh I'm just God. thinking about this. Like, I, I feel like when it became time for the pack to, like, all get their cool outfits for the show, like, he's the one who insisted that a giant wolf face be on his outfit, like, he on the chest piece. He wears that the entire show. Like, you never I see... Know. No, actually, we do No, no, he doesn't. Off. Not in prison. Not in prison, baby. Uh-huh. He, Which let, I can't wait it. till we get to his prison That's episode. That's his hottest appearance. Is... I know. Oh I agree with God. you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't wait till... That's in season two, like, really early on. I can't wait till we get to it. I think it's, like, it. one of the first, if not the first episode of season two. I, I think it's... It, it, it's either the first or the second. I don't remember. It's it's very early, but yes. Yeah. Um. So long story short, um, I don't know if he has multiple copies of his outfit. Uh, probably, maybe it's all he wears. Maybe he just has the one copy, and that's all he wears, and he has to wash it all the time, and he's just like. Not wearing anything rest of the yeah, time. Yeah, so like Dingo just has to be used to him just being naked in in their their living quarters like all the time whenever it's laundry day. God, I feel so bad for Dingo. <laughs> like, uh, like Dingo gets repaid in various ways. Uh, could you imagine me just like genuinely just me as Wolf's roommate though? No, I can't. What would that be like? Who would you it be would just more... Be you, like, you would just be pressed into his armpit, like, 24-7, and he would never leave it. Oh, my God. Like, he'd try to leave the house to go to his job, and he'd still be there. And he'd be like, get off, kid. See, I love it. I, I, I like the idea now that I think of it, because it's like, Wolf is the kind of person always seeking, like, affection. And I know in my mind that if I show, like, affection, I show that I'm, like, secretly obsessed with him, he would be s- repulsed by me. So I would have to constantly pull off this display of brattiness in my day-to-day life. Oh, my God. Just to appease him and just to make him interested in me. So as I'm just, like, screaming to get out of his pit, I'm just, like, secretly, like, oh my god. Because he needs to feel like he's, like, conquering someone yeah, at all times. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Okay, so that was a mouthful. <laughs> okay, um, in summary, Lucian, thank you for this email. Um, I think Wolf would be stinky. He, he's very, <laughs> very stinky, yes. <laughs> He doesn't even wear fucking, like, sweat bracelets or anything when he works out. He just works out in his, like, fucking spandex and his wolf costume. The goddamn, like, a goddamn idiot. He's stupid. He's so stupid. He, he can't I, I think that's why him. Fox hired him. She was like, I need the stupidest man alive. I need Bring someone so <laughs> stupid that he makes me look smarter. Also, okay, like, the packs, they all have, like, animal-themed names. But these are the only names they ever go by, too. Like, these, yeah! are, these are their actual names that they had before being put into, like, the TV show. 
Yeah. Do foxes go out and be like, I need animal-themed people. Like, just <laughs> bring me what you have. Just putting out an ad for animal people. Like, yeah, it's just like, like do you have a... Do you, are, <laughs> is your name animal-themed? Join my TV show. That's so great. I love that. Oh, God. I, I don't know. There's I a lot. The pack. I love the pack so much. I hate oh, that God. they just sent to prison, but I don't think they'll last there. You know, they they won't be there for long, I don't think. When you said they won't last there, I'm like, oh, my God, what happens to them in prison? <laughs> they get shanked. No! <laughs> no, they're fine. Everyone's they, fine. They try to shank Wolf, but they miss, and they hit him in the butt cheek. I do feel like Wolf has lots of shower sex, because he has to assert his dominance on all the other Wolf, guys. definitely... No, like, it's like he comes back from, like, the, the showers, and he's still stinky for some reason. He, like, he smells <laughs> like man sweat. And they're just like, do you know how to take a shower properly? He's, like, properly than most guys. He just, like, sits back all cockily. He's probably, like, he probably refuses to use soap, because he's worried that he, like, he might ever drop it. So he, he makes everyone else drop the soap around him so that he can fuck them. It's an interesting unexplored <laughs> dynamic there of just a gay, a closeted gay man just, like, dealing with prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when we get to that episode, I, I'm sure we'll think of many things to say okay. about that. Okay. Um, is there anything <laughs> more that should um, be said or addressed? I don't think so. Those are all the emails. Uh, uh -huh. We did all our little sections. Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess we can just close it. I can't think of anything else to say right now. We could um, talk about this kind of shit for hours is the problem. I know, but we already have been. Um, oh, one more thing we should say. Um, is next time we will be recording an episode for the Loincloth Hour... Um, I will likely be in the same room as Croup. That's right, Sid's coming for a visit! I am! I'm gonna live with Croup and his boyfriend for two weeks, and I'm just gonna have to deal with my, my stinky, my stinky butt. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you do laundry more often than Wolf does, so you'll probably be Probably. Fine. I sweat, and I sweat just should... as much. Yeah, bro. Let's yeah. do it. Like, yeah. to your... <laughs> oh, radical. <laughs> I'm gonna close it there. <laughs>